Surah 5, The Feast, Al-Ma'idah In the name of God, most gracious, most merciful. O you who believe, you shall fulfill your covenant. Permitted for you to eat are the livestock, except those specifically prohibited herein. You shall not permit hunting throughout Hajj pilgrimage. God decrees whatever he wills. O you who believe, do not violate the rites instituted by God, nor the sacred month, nor the animals to be offered, nor the garlands making them, nor the people who had for the sacred shrine, Kaaba, seeking blessings from their Lord in approval. Once you complete the pilgrimage, you may hunt. Do not be provoked into aggression by your hatred of people who once prevented you from going to the sacred masjid. You shall cooperate in matters of righteousness and piety. Do not cooperate in matters that are sinful and evil. You shall observe God. God is strict in enforcing retribution. Only four meats prohibited. Animals that die themselves defined. Prohibited for you are animals that die themselves. Blood, the meat of pigs, and animals dedicated to other than God. Animals that die of themselves include those strangled, struck with an object, fallen from a height, gored, attacked by a wild animal, unless you save your animal before it dies, and animals sacrificed on altars. Also prohibited is dividing the meat through a game of chance. This is an, abo um, an abomination. Today, the disbelievers have given up concerning their erudicts the eradication of your religion. Do not fear them and fear me instead. Today I have completed your religion, perfected my blessings upon you, and I have decreed submission as the religion for you. If one is forced by famine to eat prohibited food without being deliberately sinful, then God is forgiver, merciful. They consult you concerning what is lawful for them. Say, Lawful for you are all good things, including what trained dogs and falcons catch for you. You train them according to God's teachings. You may eat what they catch for you and mention God's name thereupon. You shall observe God. God is most efficient in reckoning. Today, all good food is made lawful for you. The food of the people of the scripture is lawful for you. Also, you may marry the chaste woman among the believers, as well as the chaste women among the followers of previous scripture, provided you pay them their due dowry. You shall maintain chastity, not committing adultery, nor taking secret lovers. Anyone who rejects faith, all his work will be in vain, and he, in the hereafter he will be with the losers. Ablution. O you who believe, when you observe the contact prayers, Salat, you shall wash your faces, wash your arms to the elbows, wipe your heads, and wash your feet to the ankles. If you were unclean due to um, <clears throat> sorry, a sexual orgasm, you shall bathe. If you are ill or traveling or had any digestive excretion, urinary, fecal, or gas, or had uh, contact with the women and you cannot find water, you shall observe the dry ablution by touching clean, dry soil and rubbing your faces and hands. God does not wish to make the religion difficult for you. He wishes to cleanse you and to perfect his blessing upon you that you may be appreciative. Remember God's blessing upon you and his covenant that he covenant, covenanted with you. You said, we hear and we obey. You shall observe God. God is fully aware of the innermost thoughts. Thank you very much, sister. That's very kind of you. And you did a really good job. God bless you for that. Um, did you have any questions or comments about what was read? Yeah, actually, it says, no. um, oh, her, sorry. Yeah, her, sorry. She just gets the priority because she did an important deed of reading for us. And for everyone who joined, peace be upon you. Welcome back to the submission server. We just read in chapter five, all the way to verse seven. So now we're asking Sister Pellin if she has any questions about what was read. Yeah, you don't have any questions? Okay, no problem, God bless you. Uh, anyone have any questions? Who is, sorry, I didn't catch who was speaking now. Please come up and ask your question. Was that you, yeah. Brother Malik? 
Who is that? It's oh, Aaron. 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 Go ahead, Aaron. brother Aaron. God bless you. Come up and ask uh, your question. Yeah. What's your question? Um, when um, pig is mentioned, which what's the root uh, or what's the word? Is it pig? Um, yes, lahm al khanzir. Lahm al khanzir means the meat of pig, the flesh of pigs. And is uh, um, a boar equivalent to a pig? Yes, lahm al khanziran actually. Okay. Okay. Thank you. It means the meat of pigs. So on that point, it's important to note that the meat is distinguished from the fat. So God specifically prohibits the meat and not the fat of the pig. And so God is very deliberate and specific with the dietary prohibitions. Oh, and actually, um, sorry, there's two footnotes we didn't read. Uh, do we have a volunteer to read these two uh, footnotes? I put it in VC1. Dash chat. If not, I can just read it, no problem. Hunting, this is from verse 2. Hunting and the cutting of plants are forbidden during pilgrimage for the con conservation of natural resources. With thousands of pilgrims converging on Mecca, if hunting were permitted, the land would quickly be stripped of its natural resources. Animal offerings are, part, are made part of the pilgrimage to provide for the converging pilgrims, as well as the local population, and to replenish any depleted supplies. See 2196. Footnote of verse 3. The meat of the pig is prohibited, not the fat. Anything that is not specifically prohibited in the Quran must be considered lawful. 6145. See 61445 to 146. All right. Anyone have any verse? Anyone have any questions or comments about the verses we read in chapter five up to verse seven? Please. Mm, I'll make a yes, comment. Yes, everyone. Oh, good. Please. Oh, brother, dude, please go, go, dear. You go first, please. Sure. Um, yeah, the the footnote cites uh, six one forty five one forty six. Uh, there's four verses in the Quran that discuss the uh, uh, that specify the dietary prohibitions, and um, six one forty five is the most uh, comprehensive. And uh, I'll pull it up really quick. Does say so? This is the the uh, God telling the prophet that in regards to the dietary prohibitions, this is literally what he's supposed to say. It says, "Say I do not find in the revelations given to me any food that is prohibited for any eater." So here it's saying that out of all the wahi that the, the, the prophet received, this includes scripture and non-scripture, right? All the communication God uh, uh, gave the prophet, the only uh, dietary prohibitions for anyone who eats or even tastes food is one, carry on, two, running blood, three, the meat of pigs for it is contaminated, and four, the meat of animals blasphemously dedicated to other than God. So if one is forced to eat these without being deliberate or malicious, then your Lord is forgiver most merciful. And what's interesting is if you ask the uh, traditionalists, you, they say, you know, in essence, hey, what are the dietary prohibitions? Depending on which uh, school of thought they are, you know, they might have a list of 30 plus additional dietary prohibitions. And this shows that out of all the revelations the prophet ever received, these are the only four dietary prohibitions. And uh, it, it's one of these things that it's such a ironclad um, uh, example of disobedience of the Quran and the, the the very fact that it's saying out of all the revelations that's given, this is the only ones that we can say are the dietary prohibitions according to God. What is, uh, if I may ask, run, running blood? Is uh, like, for example, if a blood pie is made, a blood sausage is made with um, whatever meat that's 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 allowed, is that also then allowed? Yeah, so running blood is blood that you can like pour into a cup and drink. So if you pour it into a cup, make it into blood sausage, and it coagulates, it still uh, constitutes running blood. Uh, this is different than meat, uh, blood that's trapped within the meat. So for instance, you go and get a steak, and you eat it, you know, medium uh, or rare even, right? Uh, it's fine because the, the blood is trapped within the meat. If you go, you drain it into a cup and stuff, then it's prohibited to drink. And it, yeah, they do blood sausage in... Um, uh, uh, Asia, you do the uh, it's like blood jello. I don't know what they call it. Uh, it's pretty uh, 
Three crows. That's right. Um, <clears throat> peace be upon you. Peace be upon you all. Um, peace be upon you. This, peace peace be upon you. you. Thank God for this opportunity. What a blessing. Um, yeah, so that that is an interesting question, and that comes up. Uh, first of all, I'm remembering um, to say I'm away from the I can't be away from the chat. And the footnote for six one forty five to one forty six, I think, also uh, clarifies uh, that point. I think it's a good um, one, mashallah. That uh, only four kinds of animal products. This is for six one forty five. The footnote: only four animal products are prohibited. Animals that die of themselves, running blood, not trapped within the meat. The meat of pigs and animals dedicated to other than their creator. Verse 146 informs us that such prohibitions are very specific. God prohibits either the meat or the fat or both if he so wills. So, yeah, that is something that comes up like these blood products, like, you know. Um, and so if I understood correctly, um, Brother Dude was saying that that is also prohibited because it's like, it's not just trapped in the meat. It's just blood that they've taken and separated, and then they're doing different things with it, pie or um, whatever it is. Um, uh, yeah, so that that is my understanding as well. Um, I, I'll pause here so it doesn't take, get to be too long, and I think uh, Sister Peace GPS also had a comment. Thanks. Okay. Um, Sister GPS, do you want to talk, or I, should, I can go ahead? Go ahead, brother. Well, Please. Okay. Um, mashallah. Um, regarding the uh, uh, the blood of the blood that God prohibits, uh, I I have visited uh, one of the you know villages in my state, and I was amazed to see you know the, the practice of those uh, villagers when they slaughtered an animal and um, they trapped the blood. So I was just watching to see what they were really going to do. And the next thing was uh, for them to, you know, put it in a pot and they put it on fire and until it floats up and it becomes something like a meat and they began to eat it. So immediately I remembered this was where God says, we should not eat the meat of, uh, even though even though they it seems like uh, they put it on fire, they cooked it. But if God says we should not eat it, we should not just eat it because I think some of the diseases will, you know, come out from the running blood, and this is why God does not want us to eat thank, it. That, thank yeah. you, brother. Thank you, brother. Thank GPS, you. go ahead, please. No, no, I'm still on. I have not finished, oh, okay. brother. Okay, please, there's a few people in line, so please make your comment. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, regarding the meat of pig also, we have seen in Surah 16, verse 115 to 118, the uh, footnote, you know, that the, the reason why God prohibits for us the eating of the meat of pig because of the diseases, you know, entrapped on the, on the meat. And I think Navid was saying that uh, uh, God did not uh, prohibit the eating of the fat, but the meat. So uh, the diseases are trapped uh, mostly on, on the meat, not on the fat. And we see the comment there, the most uh, devastating creature says parasite, creature spirals, also the pop tap one, tenuous solium survives in the meat of pigs, not the fat. More than 150,000 people are infected annually in the United States. So, alhamdulillah, we are able to know through research that this is what is trapped, uh, and this is why God is prohibiting uh, us from eating the meat of pig. No matter how look good or decent it might look, we should just avoid it. Mashallah. God bless you. Thank you very much. GPS, please. Go ahead. And not, I'm sorry, I'm not making this comment for GPS for everyone. Please, we have many, many people here. If we could just keep our comments as brief as possible, just to get to the point directly, so we can have moved to the next person. This was not for you, GPS. I just said it at this point. Go ahead, GPS, please. Thank you, Brother Nabi. God bless you. Um, I just wanted to share that we find the complete prohibition of food 
uh, in dietary prohibitions of Appendix 16. Did anybody read 6145 yet? Yes, we all yeah, read that. And actually, actually I'm Mashallah. putting the appendix so in the that, chat, inshallah. Yeah. I'll put yeah, that in the so chat we for already you. Know, Appendix 16. We already know exactly what uh, is prohibited. 6145 is quite complete. Now, I have a question about only four misprohibited animals that die of them, self-defined. This is uh, Surah 5, verse 3. And I'm not going to read the whole verse because it was already you know, read, but there's one part that is very interesting to me. He says, also, prohibited is dividing the meat through a game of chance. This is an abomination. So uh, I want to understand what is your take on it. I have I understand I have my own opinion, but I want to hear other opinions. How where where do we put this prohibition? Also, prohibited hey, what, is dividing the you, meat. With why don't you share with us what you have first, sister? Maybe we I'm can sorry. So, oh, yeah. So. Oh, let's just let's go through the questions because people are asking questions in the chat and we need to go through these quickly. Yeah, um, I just gave my, sister, my question. Yeah, I'm done. Sister Lisa asked a question. She says, "Are pigs offal skin, ears, trotters, bone marrow, other things as far as meat? As far as I can tell, most of those, maybe with the exception of bones, those are all meats because it's all flesh. You see, it's all falls under meats. The only thing is not meats is the is the um, the fat. So all those other things are flesh and skin and different, or oh, for anyone who doesn't know, offal is like different organs, intestines, you know, all these different things. These are all organs. These are all meats. So you, you cannot eat any of those. Okay. Uh, did we meet? Okay. Sorry. Go ahead. Somebody want to ask the next question? Please come up and ask your question. Can, uh, if it's related to this, yeah, go ahead. Give please. An pieces of... yeah yeah please if you can give an answer to this and we can just focus on this quickly we get through the dietary stuff and then people are asking other questions about the other verses so go ahead please thank you so what's fascinating about this is this is an example of an action being prohibited while the meat itself is not prohibited in this uh, uh example that uh pc brought up in uh five three it's saying dividing the meat through a game of chance right uh in the actual uh, arabic is the concept of uh, divine arrows like you're pulling lots in that sense um that that action is prohibited in the dividing the meat but the meat itself is fine to eat assuming it's not one of these four uh, categories because a lot of times what happens is people start prohibiting uh, uh foods because of some other uh, factor and we have to make a distinction between, okay, is the food prohibited or is it the action that's prohibited? Because if we conflate those two, we're going to start prohibiting things that God did not prohibit. That's my uh, understanding of that. Thank you, Thanks, Brother Jude. God bless you. Thanks Thank a lot. All right, uh, Sister sorry. DPS, you wanted to say something. Can you share with us what you have in mind? MashaAllah, Brother Duke said exactly what I wanted to say. Excellent. Okay. And it sounds like, he's, uh, sounds like he's hitting multiple birds with one stone because in the chat they're saying their question was answered also. Thank you so much. Regarding Mashallah. this, Brother Bassam, if you want to debate the Christian, can you please go to inter-religious uh, dialogue? Because we cannot have a debate here in, in the middle of Quran study about the foundations of Christianity and this kind of stuff. So please, move the debate of Christianity to the channel Interreligious Dialogue. I put it there in the chat. Just go over there, tag everybody that wants to have that debate, and move that for now. Thank you so much. I wanted to go add ahead. something before, before we lose our uh, uh, Christian brother here, um, in the sense of this comes up a lot uh, regarding the, you know, uh, what's the big deal about pig, okay? Uh, the, the concept is, you know, God didn't need to tell us in the, uh, um, the uh, Quran not to eat rotten meat, right? Because if we eat it, we get sick. God puts the stuff in there that, in essence, are so – they seem like they have all the hallmarks of a food you want to eat, okay? One of the things – it's like it's a fact. The the meat of pig, you talk to anyone who eats it, they say, oh, it's so delicious, okay? I don't think anyone who eats rotten meat is going to be making that claim, okay? That's the first one. Second thing is uh, animals, uh, predominantly livestock, they have a uh, productivity coefficient. 
this productivity coefficient, it has to do with how much feed is required, uh, how uh, fast they can gain uh, meat, and then uh, how long is the gestation period. These are some of the factors that are at play. And out of all the animals, it's crazy. So you look like the, uh, the, the animals we eat, they're all off the charts. But there's one animal that is so productive uh, that in essence that uh, we, you know, God needs to call out to say, look, don't eat this animal. And that's pig. The gestation period for a pig is, is funny enough. It's about 114 days. OK, pigs can eat virtually anything. They can put on weight faster than almost any other animal. They'll even eat their own. OK, and it's these factors that makes eating pigs so tantalizing for the masses, because if you want to feed a large portion of the population, you want to have high margins like, yeah, uh, growing and producing uh, pork. It's highly productive in that sense. Now, the question is, OK, well, what's the trade off? So many people, they say, well, look, I didn't get a, a brain parasite. What's the big deal? It just happens. This is very interesting. Out of all the animals, the animal that is the closest as far as physiologically with the human being uh, is the pig, more so than even the monkey. Uh, and to the point that they did the uh, heart transplant last year, it, it didn't last, but nevertheless, it shows the potential. They grew a human heart inside of a living pig and then transplanted that into a human. Even for some of these uh, people who uh, have lost digits or they've lost skin, there's a, a pig skin grafts where, again, they take the protein from a pig to regenerate human, um, uh, which we call it, uh, uh, cells. That's phenomenal. But it's also scary because because of this uh, similar similarity in physiology, we are very receptive to any of the diseases that human being uh, that pigs get. This goes from humans to pigs, back to humans, and each time it uh, basically um, uh, uh, evolves, we, we have a new strain. So say, for instance, every year we have the flu. This actually predominantly comes from pigs. If human beings and pigs weren't in so, such close proximity and stuff, it would severely reduce the amount of ailments we had. And just a few stats, um, 2009, we had the swine flu epidemic. It's estimated that 11 to 20 percent of the global population got swine flu. That's 6.8 billion people contracted this illness that came from uh, pigs. 700 million to 1.4 billion people were infected. And it's onset. It's believed that over uh, 150 to 575,000 people died from this swine flu. OK. And in addition, the, the largest epidemic we've had to date, you know, even uh, more so on a uh, per capita basis, was the uh, 1919 um, uh, Spanish influenza. And this killed 5% of the, the world population. So out of uh, 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 1 billion people, which is estimated the, the, the population at that time, 50 million people died from this one uh, disease. Again, they believe it came from a pig. But, you know, these are not trivial matters in that sense. Uh, this has huge ramifications, and it's this concept that we're continuously breeding them. They're uh, uh, cohabitating with humans. These ailments just keep coming around, you know? All right, thank There's you for stuff. that. Thank you for that. Uh, uh, can I add something? Yes, you can. Please go ahead. Peace be upon you. Assalamu alaikum, everybody. Um, I think what, what the point that um, Brother Du was saying before, is, is is a recent point about one um the pig was just talking about other there's there's actually verses in the Quran uh, 6136 talks about the crops that has been dedicated um or set aside let's say that set aside that's the word that's been used um the same thing can apply here is discusses crops that's been part of it set aside for God and the part of it was set aside for their idols so the action has been clarify that the action is wrong the action is idol worship but it's, it's mixing it with eating it is is something different this is a good another example uh, if you can just load it up to 6136 would be good it's loaded up in the chat yeah he says <clears throat> they even set aside a share of god's provision of crops and livestock saying this share belongs so it, it both crops and livestock saying this share belongs to God according to their claims, and this share belongs to our idols. However, what was set aside for the idols never reached God, while the share they set aside for God invariably went to their idols. Miserable indeed is what their is their judgment. So, if you want to use the word Arabic, um, it's not the, the same word they use for eating, like the 
word mohella, which is used for those uh, for dietary prohibition, uh, is 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 a different word, um, which is in in I think we say um, I think if I'm not mistaken. Um, um, let me see. Yeah. It, yeah, we we know. get it for you, brother. It's here. We got it for you. Yeah. We got it for you. The word. Yeah. yeah the point. word. Yeah. No problem. It's actually not even a specific word in terms of like a dedicated word. It just means set aside for them. So there's nothing special there. <clears throat> anyway. Um. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your comment. Peace be upon everybody. Everybody who joined. We're at chapter five, all the way to verse seven. Uh, anyone w welcome to make any questions or comments about what was read? Please come up. Brother Taslim, did you have a question you want to ask? Please come up. You... <clears throat> I noticed you had a question about verse seven. Um, I have a comment if um, Brother Tasleem is not available. Go ahead, Brother Tasleem. <laughs> then she can go. Okay, sounds good. He's unmuted. That's why I called on him. Oh, go ahead, can brother. you guys hear me? Yeah, go ahead, please. Yes. Oh, mashallah. Sorry, my earpiece had a problem. I posted it earlier um, about verse 5-7. Uh, can you guys talk a bit more about the covenant, uh, when it took place, and and the purpose of it, and then when when did we say we hear and obey? That was my question. Thank you, guys. Thank you, brother. All right, uh, we can check just briefly. If anyone has any answer for his question, please provide it. Um, otherwise, we can wait a moment. If no one's coming up, Sister Fari, go ahead, please. Um, thanks. Uh, yeah, so I was just going to um, comment a couple of things. One is um, the, um, you know, we read uh, 6, 6145, and so the, um, the footnote clarifies um, that, you know, this is talking about the animal products that are prohibited. And we need to understand any topic in the Quran, we need to consider all the on that topic. That's why God says to read the Quran from cover to cover. So <clears throat> I just shared my, I just want to share my thoughts about that. And I looked up this thing about this um, blood pie. It's interesting, one recipe that comes up, they have two cups of pig's blood in there. They have a lot of other stuff too, but uh, it was just interesting that, you know, there is, they're taking like cups of blood to pour and make into this pie. So I'm going to share that. And lastly about the question, uh, Sister Peace GPS um, asked. I just wanted to share a couple of thoughts um, about that too. Um, so my understanding is that, like it was said, it's the action. And just to elaborate on that a little bit, that God doesn't want, you know, something as important as like food, which is um, vital to be um, to be distributed based on a game of chance. Um, and it shouldn't be the kind of thing that people are, you know, it's being raffled or people are gambling. Because uh, people gamble for money, people can also, um, you know, there can be gambling um, for uh, getting meat. Um, I kind of came to appreciate a little bit during Hajj um, how, like, it seems like how desperate people are for food there and for, like, the meat of, so... Thank God, like we went to the slaughterhouse and when the <clears throat> the goats, the animals that we had chosen were sacrificed, they um, then they gave us the meat and we were giving it out to the people for, for the most part. Um, there was one that was going to be distributed. Um, uh, but anyway, so and it just um, and people were almost like fighting, you know, when it was like running low, people were almost like um uh, it was kind of a tense situation at the end. So it just showed me like how desperate some people are for, for food. And so, um, 
I just wanted to share that uh, as well. And, and also the wisdom of the um, Quran and the practices that God says to do this. Um, when we go there, I had a chance to see and experience that. So uh, it's amazing. Thanks. Peace. Can, can any of you Hajis uh, descri describe to us what, what are the garlands? The garlands. Please, somebody expand upon the garlands. Thank you. I have a different question. Yeah, Jeff, we don't know if they use garlands anymore because I'm not able to find it, but basically garlands are the what they throw around the neck of the um, cows. It's like a decoration thing. I, I, um, yeah, I, uh, mark, I, it's like, mashallah. Yeah, they, they mark the animals, like once you kind of like um, choose or once whoever chooses, like the ones to be sacrificed then they mark them because they're in this like you know like a lot of you know they're all together and then they mark them and then they take them um to the slaughterhouse to sacrifice so that's my understanding okay, thanks thank you very much <laughs> um i have hey, a comment. comment go ahead go ahead okay. jeff are you done with your comment jeff i no, I, I, I i guess there's a, oh a picture was, was put was, in the chat, brother. If you look in the chat, you'll see a picture of the garland. Mashallah. Okay. Can uh, I give my comment now? Yes, please, GPS. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I had a short comment about the fabrications of Hadith and Sunnah, which is all uh, uh, of falsehood uh, about our religion. Uh, Usually when we talk to Sunnis or anybody that upholds the Hadiths hadith and Sunnah, they always ask, you know, where is the contract prayer in Quran? And that could go forever. Nobody knows. They, I mean, they just make such crazy claims. Let's forget about that. I, I think God has given us a fantastic uh, answer uh, to just get rid of all the Hadiths and Sunnah is the evolution. Here, God tells us, all you who believe, when you observe the contract prayer salat, you shall wash your face, wash your arms to the elbow, wipe your heads, and wash your feet to the ankle. It's extremely straightforward. So there is no if or but about this. It is not my idea, your idea, my understanding. When you, this is what I did, and I, and I see it works very well. It's like when people say about al Fatiha, I, mean, I say, well, why don't we start before that? We first got to do evolution, right? And uh, when it comes to evolution, right off the top, how you do your evolution? And they always give you so many steps, at least 11 to 12 steps to get evolution. You have to wash the hands three times, arms three times, face three times. Watch the nose, watch the ears, whatever I do. So I asked them, how come you have, your evolution doesn't coincide with the evolution decreed by God? He said, well, we saw Prophet Muhammad do this evolution this way, and that's why we are uh, you know, following Prophet Muhammad. So this basically means uh, that Prophet Muhammad, astaghfirullah, who have actually received the Quran, written it, and given it to people directly from God, has decided to do something different. 11 steps uh, instead of four steps. And this will, as Sakhwarilo, show that Prophet Muhammad uh, is not obeying God. And this is, a, this is a, what I believe is the tool that basically puts an end to their uh, blasphemies against God and his messengers. So to me, the Hadith books and them are a way for Satan to dupe them and just get, get them involved in nonsense. Uh, so people, but people who know the truth could just make their point on evolution and we are done this. The rest is all attributes. Thank you of so much, sister. Yes, thank you so much. Every, thank you. If everyone just keep their comments shorter so everyone has time to comment and speak. Thank you so much. All right, who's next? They want to make a comment. Please come up. 
And for everyone who doesn't know, we read from chapter 5, verse 0 to verse 7, or from the beginning to verse 7. Um, a question was asked about the covenant in 5-7. Some answers were given. Brother Tom gave uh, an answer. Brother Tom, do you want to come and elaborate on your answer, please, on the verses that you provided us with? Peace be upon you, Brother Tom. Okay. Um, so I think a couple brother, brother and sister, uh, sister Noor Jahan put the verse about seven one. Uh, sorry, I'm losing track of the verses right now. The verse about seven one seventy two, where we're born with natural instinct of God. I saw that. I just wasn't sure if that's the covenant. Maybe that is, and I agree that verse is about witnessing God uh, for ourselves. But I didn't necessarily see that that's the covenant that's being talked about in 5-7. I don't know. So if anyone wants to comment on this further, please come up and um, speak on this. Um, so there's different, um, there's covenant that is also mentioned like with the children of Israel elsewhere. But I think this, my understanding of this at the moment is that this is um, the general covenant maybe referring to, I think it's Surah 36, um, 60 and 61, um, that, yeah, Surah 36, verse 60. 60 and 61, that's correct. And Has that already been posted? No, yeah, we just got posted right now. We could read it for you, inshallah. The devil is the other alternative. Did I not covenant with you, O children of Adam, that you shall not worship the devil, that he is your most ardent enemy, and that you shall worship me alone? This is the right path. Go ahead, please. Thank you. Praise God. Yeah, so um, and maybe referring to this, the um, covenant to worship God alone. Um, thanks. God bless you. That's a good answer. At least I appreciated that. Thank you so much. Sister Noor Jahan, did you want to expand on this since you put a few verses on this topic? It, I, what immediately came to mind was the covenant and not the covenant the instinctive knowledge. But thank God this is more relevant. Uh, what Fari posted or recommended the verses um, make more sense. The other words I posted about was uh, for the conversation on the chat with, with about shirk and how associating anything with God is, is idolatry. That was in reference to the conversation on the chat. And praise God, the sister of Fari made a really good point because there's a covenant made with the children of Israel. That's in 283, right? And another covenant was made with them in 263, right? So, but this one that she mentioned, it says, O oh, children of Adam, there's a covenant made. So this is the covenant made with the children of Adam. It's amazing. I'm just not sure that 7172 is the actual covenant. I understand and I appreciate that's an event that's occurred, but I'm not, that's not the, that's just like, maybe it's a part of the covenant, but it's not the covenant itself. God bless okay. you. I mean, uh, I actually do think that it's in reference to these ones, the 172 and 36, 16, 61. I'll tell you why. Uh, usually in the other covenants, like if you look at the, the ones regarding the uh, uh, children of Israel or the ones re regarding the uh, prophet, the, the Arabic that's used is what is, and it's, uh, uh, Rashad usually translates it as recall, right? Uh, but this is for a specific group. What's used in 5-7 is actually zikru. It comes from zikr. It means like remember you all, right? So this is something me, you, everyone, be able to to reflect upon this. That's the way I understand it. The only thing that I uh, know that comes in the Quran regarding a covenant that all the uh, descendants of Adam, you know, bore witness to, uh, are those that uh, we worship God alone. That you know, uh, uh, the shahada is uh, uh, that we bear witness. There's no other God beside God. Uh, I'll make a comment regarding uh, the, the use of the word uhillah 
Um, so in the uh, four verses that discuss the uh, dietary prohibitions, when it comes to the fourth uh, dietary prohibition, it always uses this term, Allah. So uh, what is slaughtered, right, in the name of other than God. So if we kill an animal, and uh, we mention Zeus, Jesus, you know, uh, Imam Reza, whatever, uh, then in essence, that animal is not lawful for us to eat. Um, but if someone kills an animal, you know, and doesn't mention any name upon it, then it's uh, uh, lawful for us to eat. But it's the responsibility of the individual who slaughters it to mention what? only God's name. This what if they mention? To... Yeah, go ahead. I was going to say this kind of goes to the same concept regarding uh, dividing the meat through a game of chance. If someone doesn't mention a name and slaughters an animal like they do in uh, you know mass uh, consumption, the sin is on that person who did the slaughtering, right? But the, the 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 meat of that animal is still lawful for us to eat. What if they mentioned God's name? If someone slaughters an animal in the name of God, can the idol worshippers do anything to that, or that's primarily stamped? In your opinion? That's the thing is. It's just ohillah, right? It's not a dhikr. Dhikr, it, like if you look in 6.121, here, I'll put the verse really quick. This is a commandment upon every uh, believer. It says, do not eat from that upon the uh, name of God has not been mentioned. And the, the Arabic there is dhikr. Uh, for it is an abomination. The devils inspired their allies to argue with you. If you obey them, you will be idol worshippers. So this means that before we eat any food, right, we, we mention God's name upon that food. But this is different than Ohilla. Ohilla is strictly the act of slaughtering that animal. So when you go to slaughter that animal, you know, if uh, you mention God, and that meat is lawful to eat, you know, it doesn't matter. There is nothing the, the, the idol worshippers can do to, to alter that. Uh, Mike uh, referenced the verse 5, uh, five one of 3. Uh, Mike, if you can talk, maybe you can share uh, that because that's a, that's a powerful uh, uh, argument. Let's load the verse in the chat. So basically saying there's no rededication process. Once something's stamped but for God, no, the idol worshiper cannot do anything to make it for an idol. And similarly, if something's stamped for the idol, we cannot do anything to rededicate it for God. There is no such concept of rededication. It's slaughtered once, and actually Messenger of Covenant explains that when you do that, you're taking the life of the animal, and when you're dedicating, you're getting permission. The problem is when these guys dedicate to the idol, they're getting permission from the wrong God, right? So we get permission from God, we say Bismillah, and we slaughter the animal in the name of God. We're taking the life of the animal and we're getting, um, we're dedicating the name of God. But if we take the life in the name of an idol, then that's it. We destroyed the, the uh, consumption of that animal and we cannot eat it because it's been dedicated to other than God. And that's where it says, Oh, hello, laqayr Allahi, means uh, uh, dedicated to other than God. Mike, are you uh, able to, uh, to to talk? I um, think Mike is not. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mike. yeah, yeah, I can. I just, you were making a good point. That's why I didn't want to interrupt it. Um, yeah, the point was 5103, and I, I don't want to have, dude can probably interject as I say it, because I don't, because in 5103, we have an example of God telling us something that he did not prohibit. And what's interesting is these four uh, categories of animals that are mentioned here are all animals that are literally involved in idol worship. Um, and the direct Arabic, and I'm sure Peter may be able to put that up for me, like literally the names of them, if you can look at them, they're all involved in idol worship. And what's profound about that is a question one must ask right away when, if, when we're looking at what is the word dedication? What does it mean for us in context of, of dietary laws? Um, because in English, dedication has a, a whole slew of different meanings. But in the Arabic, it's a, it's a specific meaning of dedication that is what's making it permanently unlawful. So what happens is when we tend to make this, when we get confused and, and expand it beyond animals, we get into this dilemma where it's no longer the, the element of death, of slaughter is involved in what makes it prohibited. And what we see in 5103 is we have these four animals that are involved in idol worship, but God did not prohibit them. But what's very interesting is, why are they not prohibited? Because dedication, the meaning of Ohila, involves at the time of slaughter, a death. So, in, in, like for example, livestock liberated by an oath. Liberated by an oath to who? They're idle. So here we have examples of, of animals involved in idol worship that are not prohibited, because why? They were not killed at the same time. Had that animal been killed in the name of other than God, then it would have been permanently unlawful, which fits the definition of Ohila precisely. 
Correct. I Thank you very much. It. Sister Lisa has a question. She says, is animals killed by stunt? I think she means stun gun. First, then slaughter law would eat. Yeah, I mean, that's the majority of animals in the West are killed this way. They use the stun gun. And really, um, it's kind of graphic, but someone can maybe put a diagram. They, uh, they penetrate the brain of the cow and he's killed, basically. It, it's, it's called stun, but really it destroys his brain with that shot. And then they you know, start cutting it apart and, and doing that. So if this was not appropriate for us to eat, then we wouldn't be able to eat the meat in the West. So um, they're pretty much dead um, when they're starting to get cut apart. So this is important to consider. This is lawful for us. Remember, they didn't mention any name. It's okay if you don't mention any name. As in, for us, God's command is that we do mention your name. We can put the verse 6138. Can we please put that verse? If we are to slaughter an animal, the expectation is we slaughter in the name of God. But if someone doesn't say any name, that does not mean it's unlawful for us to eat. So here it says, in the middle, it says, even the, the livestock they ate, they never pronounced God's name as they sacrificed them. So this is telling us that we should and must pronounce God's name if we are to sacrifice them. But if, if a Christian or Jewish or somebody else doesn't say any name, just a random person, they don't say any name, we can still eat that meat. It's okay. You see, it's okay. The command is for us if we are doing the slaughter. But if, if this is just in the slaughterhouse, maybe it's just the machines just slaughtering them. We can eat them. So there's nothing okay. wrong with the stun gun. Go ahead. If I could chime in. Um, so regarding 5.3, these uh, uh, criteria, it says animals, uh, let's see, uh, animals that dive themselves include. So these are all part of what it means to be carry on. It's a strangled, struck with an object, fallen from a height, gored, attacked by a wild animal. And then here's the key. It says, unless you save your animal before it dies. And in the uh, the Arabic, it's uh, clear. I'm going to paste the uh, uh, snapshot of that portion. Uh, let me see if I got it right. Uh, yeah, uh, this means to slaughter and make it fit for food. Let's say an animal, again, fall, fell from a height. It's not dead yet, right? So it's not carry on. And you go through the slaughtering process to make it uh, fit for food. It's lawful to eat. All these uh, animals that are mentioned there regarding like, you know, strangled, fall from a height, they all can be uh, redeemed if you are able to slaughter them before they, are fit, they actually die. So in a slaughterhouse, it's the same thing. The intent of the entire process is that it's not just that they, you know, died on their own, uh, like uh, uh, in the wild. It's that they were being killed and slaughtered with the intention of it being food. Um, yeah, just wanted to throw that out there. And then also 5103, I, I put the Arabic there as well. Like when we read the translation, it says uh, animals, uh, 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 livestock that begets a certain combination of males and females. There's an actual Arabic word for that expression, which is baria which means that very thing. So this was a pagan practice that said, hey, look, if this livestock begets certain combinations of males or females, it's prohibited to be eaten. And uh, as Mike mentioned, you know, if we accept their prohibitions, then in essence, they're able to tell us which animals are lawful and not lawful. And God is eliminating uh, the, the, the idol worshipers from being able to do that. Just real quick, Brother Ibrahim. Oh, he left. Okay, I muted him because he was making noise. Anyway, I put a graphic. It's not, it's not, you know, scary or anything. It just shows you how the stun is done. And to make the shot, there are two areas you aim for making a quick and painless kill. This is with the stun gun. So just above the eyes, in the back of the head, a spinal cord, part of the brain that controls all organ functions. So the brain is immediately destroyed. And when you uh, use the stun gun, it actually destroys his brain and he dies. So, um, yeah, so this is just, so it's important to remember that this is being struck by an object, okay? And in all of history, you have to strike an animal to strike by an object. It's like using arrows. For example, you can use, uh, you know, rock or arrow or many different devices to, to hunt, hunt and capture um, 
your prey, your the animals to eat. So being struck by an object is talking about without the intention of eating, either by another animal or a rock falls on it from something else or in a different way. But attacking an animal with an object with the intention of eating it is perfectly lawful, and this is fine for us to eat. Um, there's no problem with this. So this is fine. Um, okay, does that answer your question? Go ahead, please. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I had a comment on this too. A blessing to be able to um, peacefully share our uh, perspectives, even if they're different in our understandings, um, even if they're different on a topic. Um, <clears throat> so my understanding of this uh, dedicate um, is that, um, so first of all, I looked up in um, Corpus, again, to get an independent um, reference point. And <clears throat> for this one, also for Ohella, it's interesting, they've also uh, translated it as dedicated to other than God. So <clears throat> I think that if we take the, the perspective that was expressed, someone who is slaughtering, we don't know what they, who or what they may slaughter in the name of. And even if we don't know, if we say that, okay, if it's slaughtered in, um, <clears throat> when it's slaughtered, it's dedicated to other than God, then we can't eat it, then we wouldn't be able to eat meat that we buy, you know, out in the markets or in the stores, because we don't know the person who slaughtered them. Um, <clears throat> what they're if well, they had a dedication other than God. But my understanding of this process is <clears throat> whoever has the ownership, they can dedicate it. So yeah, if somebody's slaughtering and, and they own it, so like let's say somebody buys a goat and then they slaughter it and at that time they're dedicating to other than God, like, you know, people <clears throat> do it for like, you know, in um, different places, like to imams, you know, um, and, and they may be asking for something. Um, they may be praying to their idol for something and then sacrificing this animal and distributing it to people. But it's in that it's dedicated to other than God. So they have the ownership so they can dedicate it, you know, as they will, like for like a sofre abul faz or whatever it is that they um, sometimes people throw these like gatherings and they say, OK, this is dedicated to, you know, this idol, this imam or and they uh, then the food there that's there is dedicated to that idol and people will come and eat from that food and they you know they've prayed for something um but if the person who has the ownership um uh is the one who dedicate has the power to dedicate and then in that case when we buy a food then we can decide what we want to do with it and how we want to use it um, yeah. And that can go so, for meat or anything else. So sixteen. Yeah. So my understanding is six one forty. If you can keep it one at a time, yeah. If you just okay. Keep it okay. One at a time. Okay. I'll, okay. I'll stop. Here. Just a, yeah. yeah, that's a lot to unpack. So okay. Sorry. <laughs> basically, yeah. So basically, and I apologize to Brother Ibrahim. Uh, there was some noise coming from your microphone. That's why I muted you. But you're you're welcome to speak uh, whenever it's your turn. But um, yeah. So so basically. This is something that comes up is this whole ownership principle. What's interesting is most butchers or slaughtering that goes on, the people that are involved with that process, they're not owners. So if we're going to say that, you know, people that slaughter animals, they could slaughter in the name of idols and it's perfectly lawful for us to eat because they are not direct owners. That's a very serious uh, claim to make. I'm personally not comfortable with that at all. I don't think ownership matters at all. And I don't think there's any reference to ownership in the Quran. The bottom line is the animal is slaughtered in the name of an idol. It doesn't matter if the person owns it or not. That animal is prohibited. There's nothing I can do about it. And regarding the United States, no slaughterhouses in America are dedicating their, as far as I know, uh, at least, you know, maybe some church or something is doing something. But as far as I know, no mainstream, you know, factory produced meats are being dedicated in the name of Jesus. No one's doing that. Literally no one. And for the most part, it's all mech, uh, me, uh, mechanic, what is it? Mecha it's all mechanical anyway. These slaughterhouses, they don't even, they have very minimal human involvement, very minimal um, involvement in even that process. These are all conveyor belts, all uh, machines, these kinds of things. So we don't have any hesitation or fear of thinking the machine mentioned the name of Jesus while it was, you know, killing this animal. 
whatsoever. No hesitation whatsoever in that. Regarding uh, corpus, um, if you want to use uh, Quran corpus, you need to go to the roots, okay? So if you're going to use that route, then you have to use it properly. When you go to a word in Quran corpus, if you go to the bottom of the page that you saw, it says a, a word can have a variety of meanings depending on the root that's applied. And then it gives you the Lane's lexicon, a link that you can go check out the roots. If you want to do that, you can do that. But we've done that. We've looked at 26 of the lexicons that even Quran corpus refers to, and they all, without any exception, say uh, Ohilla it refers to uh, dedication at time of slaughter only. That's why it's Ohilla laqayr Allahi. That word literally means uh, 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 saying a name at time of slaughter. So if you're going to say that there's a rededication process, that's a major problem. So one is this ownership business. That's a big problem to say that only people that have ownership can slaughter and name idols where all butchers, there are many butchers, most butchers don't have ownership and they can, we're saying it's okay for them to slaughter and name idols and we can eat that. That's unacceptable. And two, if we're going to say that, um, you know, there's a rededication process, you can take something that's uh, dedicated to God and then rededicate to idols, that just gets messy and it's impractical and it's inconsistent with the verses of the Quran. So we need to be very careful with this. Another point is we need to take all verses of the Quran in consideration. 6145 actually says, I do not find in the revelations given to me any food. So 6145 by default includes the whole Quran. This is why I mentioned it's the most comprehensive verse in the Quran when it comes to dietary law. And Rashad calls it a uh, uh, um, absolute verse when it comes to dietary law. Because the verse itself is in, is encompassing all verses. Because it says, I don't find in the revelations given to me. You see? So when it says uh, uh, Rashad Khalifa in Appendix 16, he calls this an absolute verse. Absolute means it cannot be missing elements in terms of categories of prohibitions. But if we're saying there's missing categories, then it's going to destroy the whole point of this verse, which God told Muhammad. Tell them there's no other food prohibited except these four. If we're going to say that there's other foods, then God told Muhammad to give them a false statement to proclaim. And by the way, this is the only verse out of the four verses that Muhammad proclaimed to the people. And it's the only verse that Rashad Khalifa put itemized and labeled as the only dietary provision and numbered the categories. God bless you. Sorry for that one too long. Can I add to that, Naveed? Yeah, go ahead, please. Yeah, I think it's also important to recognize, and I've always found this to be a very important piece when it comes to this particular topic, um, is that we all we all know that there can't be contradictions in the Quran, and if there are, it's our understanding that's off that has to be reevaluated. It's not the Quran that's got the contradiction, and I think we would all recognize that 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 piece. And I've often brought up in the past um, the the significance of why the prohibitions, according to the Quran, for the children of Israel are so significant because. We, we know in 393 that all food, it literally says all food used to be lawful for them. So that would include technically everything that may have been dedicated, right? We also know that in sir, that the children of Israel only had animal products prohibited, literally animals, things you can kill, according to 16118, which says for the Jews, we prohibited what we narrated you previously, which tells you to go back and see that it was, again, indeed, only animal products. It was never expanded beyond that. So first, we know that the children of Israel had uh, more dietary laws than us, and we know in Surah 7, 157, Prophet Muhammad was sent to them to revoke and to make all things lawful, prohibit that which is bad, and to unload the shackles and burdens imposed on them. So we have a lot of evidence from that. And in Surah 5, verse 5, it says, their lawful is lawful for you, and yours is lawful for them. So if, the, if we have dietary laws beyond animal products, and we have any food involved by just a very utterance or a sticker or whatnot, we now have a category of food that actually is prohibited for them. Right, which is not possible. So what we've learned from the Quran is very clear that the Jews had more dietary laws than us, and it was only limited to animal products. So that is an important thing to keep in mind because we can't have more than them. And the moment we expand it to non-animal foods, we have a, a, a huge slew of contradictions in the Quran. So I think that's important that we have to, it's very important to look at the topic in light of all the verses to remove contradictions. Yeah, exactly. So it's important. Yeah, please go ahead. I'll I'll wait. Okay. Uh, what do you what what do we read the verse that says 
some some of the animals, some you eat and some you ride. Does it mean that uh, the ones who ride you cannot eat them? No, 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 no. You see, you can have so. For example, with that verse, you're talking about chapter sixteen, verse eight. It says some of them we ride and others we made for luxury. Okay, so if we're going to limit it to what it says there, that means we can't use those animals for farming. But obviously you can use a donkey for farming. So that's not a comprehensive list. Just because, you know, a shovel is made for digging doesn't mean it's prohibited for using it as a weapon. We have to be very careful with prohibitions. You see, if we prohibit what God did not prohibit, then we're committing a gross offense. So Absolutely. something can be made for a specific function. That doesn't mean it's prohibited to use it in a different manner. That's right. And the verse I refer to is chapter 16, verse 8. Um, and for Sister Fari, this is a comprehensive topic. There's a lot of information if you're interested. I put it in the chat, the fourth dietary prohibition. This is a very long topic that can have a lot of research done on it, or it has had done on it. And you can analyze the evidence for yourself and study it and come to your own conclusion. But there's, let's just say a lot of work has been done on this topic, and there's a lot of resources available in the link that I put in the chat. I'm also sending it to you as a private message, inshallah. Thank I you. I have a comment. Thank God. I have a yeah, comment please go ahead. to make. I'm sorry. No, no, I think, uh, I said my brother, also said it well, brother Nabi said it well. I think <clears throat> when you look at, you know, the four dietary provision, you know, the, the, the animal part, you know, makes great sense. <clears throat> the only thing that have put me on the fence throughout the years, I've been kind of revisiting this for many years. And this is really the only puzzle is that when you, and I think it's really Swiss 16, 115, as you all know, the latest translation, Rashad, that has, has actually food dedicated um, is what's prohibited. If you look at it, so you shall not... Uh, I'm sorry, let me read it. It says the only prohibited for you dead animals, blood, meat of pig, and that which is dedicated to other than God, right? So, I'm sorry, not, not this one, excuse me, number so this one. The only prohibited for you dead animal, blood, meat of pig, and food which is dedicated to other than God, right? So, here all of a sudden, the element food comes uh, that again that could be encompassing everything, right? And there's all those other uh, of beautiful verses in white red, you know, it really points to the animal. And I see that very clearly, which makes sense. You know, six, 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 verse 145, and so on. What puzzles me is that if you go back to the progression of all the translation Rashad did, if you go back to the to the gold translation, now if you go back to the gold translation, which she translation back in 1980, 1981. It says, if you go back with that translation, everything fits like a glove. All the stuff that is said with all those other four verses fits well. Look, I'm going to read it for you. It says, he only prohibits for you animals that die of themselves, blood, meat of pig, and animals dedicated to other than God. So beautiful. Here, if you look at it, it says animals. So if you go based on 1980 translation, then everything falls in place. And then if you move on to the hardcover, it says he went, so he went from animal dedicated, then he goes to, the changes that word to that which is dedicated. Okay? Which is really interesting. So he made that progression. And then from the latest Sorry, translation. Uh, was that for, is that what you're talking about, 16115? 16115, yeah. So he went okay, from animal you. prohibited, then he went to that which is pro dedicated to Adam God, and then and the latest translation that he left behind, I think in 1990, then he changes to food which is dedicated to Adam and God. So my puzzle, I mean, this has been my uh, last stakehold, which I'm, I'm in the more of the food dedication that I believe is all prohibited, not only the action too, but the mere fact that Rashad. To, uh, specifically, uh, knowingly change these progression to food. So, if anybody has an answer for that, I love Marshall. Since we have a long and a lot more people are here, I'd love to hear their yeah, I'd love to. Too. Love to God bless you all. Very quickly, God bless you. So, Marshall. if you look at the gold translation, Rashad yeah. originally translated the first category as animals that die of themselves. Then, in the second translation, he yeah. changed it to dead animals. So. Anyone, some, someone can read that and say, well, animals that die of themselves is pretty clear. Dead, dead animals. animals. No, he, he changed no. it to, I'm sorry, to that witch. No, 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 no wait a minute. No, I'm talking about the first okay. category, brother. Please, if you're paying okay. attention. No, go ahead. In go ahead. the gold, 
He changed it from animals that die of themselves. I'm talking about 16, 115, the verse you're referring to. He, he changed it from, he originally had his animals that die of themselves, which is pretty specific and clear. He changed it to dead animals, which is a more broader representation of that category, right? Because we don't eat live animals. So people could say, well, dead animals isn't animals that die of themselves. It just means dead animals. It's not very clear. So to be consistent with that verse, 16.115, as a general verse, he changed it from the more specific to the more general. He changed animals that die of themselves to uh, uh, dead animals, right? And obviously that verse says blood. It doesn't say all blood. So not all dead animals are prohibited. We know from 6.145 which dead animals are prohibited. Not all blood is prohibited. We know that in 6.145 it's running blood that's prohibited. And not all food is prohibited. We know from 6.145 which food is prohibited. But we can even bypass this whole process and just focus on the word dedicate. If you listen to Rashad Khalifa uh, in multiple audio tapes and uh, in other places, he actually explains dedication occurs at time of slaughter. So we don't even need to worry about food or animal, any of that. When he tells animal, you when dedication, he got, yeah. when he says, hold on a second, when he defines the word dedication as time of slaughter, then your whole theory falls out the, the window. You see, because it doesn't matter what it says. It doesn't matter if it says food. It doesn't matter if it says uh, uh, animal. It doesn't matter if it says cow. It doesn't matter if it says anything. Because all we need to do is define the word dedication. If the, if the word dedication is defined by the messenger of the covenant as exclusively for... Uh, uh, time of slaughter, then the all food theory is destroyed. Does that make sense to you? Uh, not really, but hey, if I'm others so, have, I've, I've what, heard what of, part of that. What part of that? Brother Nabi, brother, brother brother no, no. Because I think, no, no, I appreciate. I'm not here. I'm just lucky to hear other people's perspective. Because I just, for me, this is the only big hang up I have is where again, yeah, as I so mentioned to I just, you. Just, hang on, I let me finish. Say, no, no, I don't want to finish. I just want to hear. I mean, I'm not sure that we have had this uh, discussion, which is I appreciate that everybody's entitled to their understanding. I just like to have if anybody else has thought about this, sure. why Rashad went through the progression. I mean, we already heard your yeah, story, but, Marshall, yeah, many yeah, but times. Hold on, but we're not worried about that, brother. I just want to. I know you're hyper. You're right now. You're laser focused on that point, and I'm not sure if you're even hearing a different point. I'm telling yeah. you that Rashad yeah. defines dedication as slaughter. Yeah, but the that? audio doesn't supersede the he translation he that he left for us. No, no, he does? But okay. He never, no, 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 no. The okay, translation so never says otherwise. Yeah, go ahead, please, Sister Medina. So, I mean, I had also similar, you know, uh, thinking uh, why that only one verse says food, you know, uh, and not the Marshall, no, thank you. Yes, we all know that uh, Arabic, all of the four verses says the same thing, right? Exactly the same thing. But but only one verse is translated as food and the other ones is either meat or animals so i was just thinking that there could be a few uh, maybe it's not even an intention translation uh because we know that there are terms in the quran for uh for people and there's also you know this is all a test you know all these things that you know the, the understandings would derive uh because you know the test uh, computers are supposed to divide you know to expose some people, you know. So I feel like all these things are happening for a reason. Why he left just one, ver uh, one uh, verse as a food translated? Uh, maybe he didn't even realize that. To be, you know, that's what I was thinking. Uh, because if he really wanted to translate all the verses, I mean, he would have done it all the verses, right? Because they have the same exact Arabic word there. So it doesn't make sense that only one verse is translated as food and the other ones are left. So I feel that's like that's a really good point. Happened. It's that's like a really a good point, and I think, and like, a trap for you know. For and that's a really good point. This is a trap for people that try to use his translation as the literal word of God. And I think, brother Gallopers, inshallah, that's not what you're doing, but it kind of sounds like you are. You're hyper focused on the vocabulary used, and that's just not how the understandings of the Quran were received to um, uh, uh, Messenger Rashad Khalifa. You see, Angel that's Gabriel fine. did not tell him. Angel Gabriel but, did not yeah. dictate to them the word food to him, but you're treating yeah. it like that. And my advice to you oh. is don't do that. Don't treat yeah, but the I, words. It's okay. I don't I think, treat. Uh, no, I no, my, my, yeah, I my think people can have. Is, hold on. Okay, hold on. No. My, this is yeah. just my advice. Everyone's free to do whatever they want, but I'm saying yeah, exactly. this was not how the revelation of the uh, meaning got to Rashad. Angel Gabriel did not tell him to dictate to him what words to use. So you have to be careful to not treat it like that. If you do, you can fall into the trap potentially that what Sister Medina is describing. Go, go ahead, Brother Jeff. 
I was just going to say, you know, let's uh, just keep let's let everybody have their perspective. We don't need to warn right, each exactly. other. We're all aware of the warning. Exactly. These things get to be put on the table, and right. you, uh, you know, because otherwise you're tack fearing your brothers and sisters, and this is there. It becomes coercive right. persuasion. Marshall. Right. Uh, so let me finish. Yeah, what thank I was you for that. Say. And I yep. think uh, Sister Medina said this creates division. Not necessarily. I'm perfectly fine with somebody having a different view on dietary prohibition. And that's how we grow. Maybe one day I'll, I'll understand what it is. There's no reason to have contention about having a different view on a dietary prohibition or circumcision or many other topics. So I think we need to kind of fix our my frame of mind. We're all students, we all learn, and that's okay. We all, I mean, for me, I'm just, I'm just sharing with you guys uh, from studying this throughout all these years, this point has been the point that has been sticking for me. I'm just sharing with you now. And just one well, last that's piece. Fine. That's one cool. last so, piece but, I want to ask shouldn't you. Be here, let me finish this. Thank you we so shouldn't much. Be, we shouldn't be in a position that we need to convince somebody somebody's right or wrong. And I understand it. And we're all here sharing each other. Let's just leave it on the table one, and move forward. Yeah. So I'm yeah, all one good. Last piece. Thank you. Peace. Well, hold on a second. But I just wanted to ask one last piece uh, as a separate note. Um, I mentioned to you that in the audio... Rashad Khalifa defines dedication. And you said, well, do we have to take the audio over the translation? Do you have any I look at it. I'll, I'll be, I'll be on, more than happy please, to listen please, to it. Yeah, please, yeah, yeah. if I can just finish my comment, and then you can say, do you have anywhere in the translation or any commentary there that Rashad translated, uh, or I'm sorry, defined dedication in the context of food differently than how he explains it in the audio? Well, all I can tell you is go based on the material I have. No, share, I understand. Right? I have to look at that. I have to evaluate that. Okay, I have to I'll, look I'll at send that. it to you, inshallah. I can I'll look at that, yeah. I'll yeah. send it to you, inshallah, but I think but this for is a key me, element. It but is hold on really, a second, because... Yeah, wait, brother, 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 you're, not, you're not being fair in you're requesting to be allowed to speak, but you're not like... Yeah, yeah, I think you're, you're you're superimposing your thoughts on everything, and that's not right. So let everybody please. speak. No, no, what I'm saying, I appreciate, I appreciate, I really love... I love these Quran studies. I love the fact that everybody's sharing their thoughts. But God willing, we shouldn't suppress certain ideas, even if it sounds kind of bizarre or whatever. It's okay. We're all here to learn each other, right? And God willing, and the truth will always prevail. We shouldn't have to, we're not the gate, gatekeepers of the truth, right? God is, and God will manifest the truth for everyone. And we're all sharing each other. And that's why I sincerely ask this question, because, mashallah, we have a big Quran study. And, mashallah, a lot of people have different perspectives. They can share with that. So I just share with you in a very sincere way. My contention on that, not contention, excuse me, so, this, my hang up on those uh, translations I, from the goal that he was from animal, had he lifted an animal, for me, everything would have fit like a glove, personally. Uh, and yeah. then the second, you know, going to that, so that's, that's I just want to hear other people's I perspective. Just, Simple as that. I, God bless I you I just want to leave, I don't want to drag this topic, I just want to leave on this last piece, okay? Hey, if, the, if the, yeah, go ahead. I was just going to say, there's, there's other people who, who want to chime in, so we got all right, go for it. Sorry, Rizwan, you want to make a comment? Sorry, my comment. You can hear me, right? I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can hear me. yeah. no, my, my yeah. comment was just like, I, I don't think that the conversation is being allowed to be responded to just the way the other conversations. I think Marshall and Navdi do a good job of kind of timing and saying, hey, you know, thank you and, and moving on. But in this case, I don't think that's happening. And that was my my opinion, my comment. So if we could do that, and again, I know some topics are like super hyper charged, which is fine, but I think you guys, by God's grace, do such a good job. Let's keep it up if we can. I wanted to just make a comment on this uh, topic. Um, so two things. So one is regarding uh, Rashad's uh, specific his, uh, translation. Um, the, the, the reality is he's always defined this fourth dietary prohibition through all his translations, all his uh, appendices, all the footnotes. This is in the context of uh, uh, animals that are slaughtered. Uh, even if you look at the, the appendix and say the computer speaks in the uh, gold Quran, the hardcover Quran, uh, even the, the, the final one after he died, all these, they say that the fourth dietary prohibition uh, is always in the context of animals slaughtered. There is no interpretation left by him that I've ever seen where he expands that to other categories of food. Uh, so that's the first thing, right? Because if we're going to make an extraction saying that, oh, okay, even though he never explained it this way, we're going to interpret it that way, 
it's not like this is a matter he didn't address. He addressed repeatedly. Um, you know, I think that that's, in all honesty, more risky than saying, okay, well, look, he has appendices, he has articles, he has uh, 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 videos, audios, all this on the subject. Where he's extracting exactly what he means by these uh, prohibitions. And to say, okay, well, that's great. I'm going to go with this, you know, uh, thing that he, he never uh, uh, said. Uh, secondly, the, the piece that's interesting is when you read all the four verses on the dietary prohibitions, the word animal is never in any of them, okay? No one thinks that carry-on, for instance, is in reference to an apple. No one thinks that running blood is in reference to celery or an orange, right? Every single one of these items is always in the context of an animal. Um, you know, these uh, fruits and vegetables and stuff like that are not part of these uh, categories. By that very aspect, they're not part of the dietary prohibition. Even if you go to the uh, traditional sources, right, there's no debate in the sense of if fruits and oranges and this and that are uh, 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 one of the dietary prohibitions. It's always, it's always animal products. That's pretty well uh, established. Um, and, you know, it's based on these that if we go with some other interpretation, to me, uh, it, it becomes problematic because at that point, we're innovating something new. I have yeah, a I, question sorry. on that um, um, the subject with you. So in essence, what, you're also, uh, what it also means is that, that one cannot dedicate an orange, I suppose, then to another god. That's that's first of all. That, that, then And that would also mean that dedication is with the sacrifice, in essence. It's uh, the life has to be taken. And, and dude, if you can just expand on just on even the fact that we can't even dedicate an orange to God, there's nothing we can do to it. To God, let alone to idols. Can you expand on that, please? Yeah, yeah. The word in uh, English, right, dedicate, is very broad. I can dedicate a book. I can dedicate a birthday cake. I can dedicate a uh, uh, an apple pie, you know, a day, whatever. But in Arabic, the word uhilla, right, it has a specific meaning of dedicating at the time of slaughter. Um, I, I linked to an article, and I put uh, – there's about a, a handful of classical uh, Arabic dictionaries. This is from Lane's Lexicon, the Chronic Arabic Dictionary. Um, where it shows that this is specifically invoking the name of God upon an animal before slaughtering it. The Arabic is very clear. If it was just a dedicate in the sense it would use the term dhikr, which is just means to mention. And secondly, you know, if we come to this interpretation that, you know, dedicate is use it in the loose term, technically birthday cake is prohibited because right? there's no doubt that when someone is making a birthday cake, think about it, you're making it for the sake of an individual putting their name on it you're singing them a song you know you're doing all these things birthday cake isn't prohibited right okay? uh, this is because birthday cake is not part of the four dietary prohibitions uh, again the, the 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 context the 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 verbiage the arabic all this is uh, uh, always in the context of animals it's never in the context of you know fruits and vegetables thank you thank you very clear very clear thank you um, alaikum. God, uh, I, I think, is it Nuri? I think Nuri had a comment, and then I, I've also been waiting for a while to speak. Thanks. Thank you, dear. I, yeah, I put it in the chat, but um, yeah, did you want to go first, dear? Um, no, dear, you haven't spoken much, so please go ahead. Okay. And just, um, I used to be also very confused about the food and the dedication and everything, and I think God likes god makes the religion easy for us and he wouldn't want us to be so confused can i eat this can i not eat this and you can't be like dedicating rededicating um it, it's it's can get pretty crazy like is this dedicated you start wondering about so many different things because there's so much idol worship that goes around in the world um like you know traditionals do it hindus do it and i grew up in India, and I saw a lot of it. And um, not saying you'd go and eat that, go out of your way and eat that. But the the point for me is like it's irreversible. It's not a crazy thing. Like it's de dedicated now. It's not dedicated anymore. It just it's not. God's not trying to confuse us. So if if dedication, because once you kill, you can't change it. If it was started in the name of other than God, 
Um, and that's why I believe that it's it's and it's very clear because that words that talks about six one forty five it is. I'm very bad with numbers. Um, uh, because yeah, carry on as everyone explained. It's related to animals. Blood is related to animals, and it says meat of pigs. It doesn't say say pigs dedicated to. The, it says meat of pigs, of course, because not the fat. Sorry, the fat is not prohibited. So it's very specific about meat. And the third, it says the meat of animals. It doesn't say animals blasphemously dedicated, because you can dedicate an animal after, even after once they're slaughtered. But when it says meat of animals, which is once once they're dedicated already, then that that is an irreversible process. Go ahead, Sister Fari, do you want to make a comment? Yeah, thank you. So um, 16, yeah, I also, that was a verse that I wanted to bring up. So um, 16, 115, um, so it's interesting. So my understanding of this uh, is that when we look at 6145, the context of those verses, if we go back to the previous verses, it's talking about animals. It's talking about livestock. So 143, eight kinds of livestock, 144, camels, two kinds of cattle, and then 145. So then it's in that context, and then that's what's being addressed the meat of animals blasphemously dedicated to other than God. And the footnote, Dr. Khalid says, only full kind of animal products are prohibited. Uh, um, sister, that's not so, correct. Look at 141. It's talking about all kinds of fruits. The context hey, Navid, is not animals let her, in those verses. Let her finish. Navid, it's fine. It's fine. Let her finish. So, but I'm talking about like the previous couple of verses before the, um, before 145. And then 115 the previous verse is talking about you shall eat from God's provisions, everything that is lawful and good, and be appreciative of God's blessings if you do worship him alone. So this is a general uh, God's provision, so it's more consistent with food. And so 115 says he only prohibits for you dead animals, blood, the meat of pigs. And then the Arabic says, and that, but Dr. Khalifa, to clarify it, put food, because that is then... Um, going back to 114 it's it's in the context of you know okay you can eat from god's provisions everything that's lawful for and good but then don't eat these things that is going back to 114 and it's referring to god's provisions which is food and um, dedicated to other than god and i just want to clarify like if i know that somebody slaughtered in the name of other than god yeah i mean i'm not going to buy that um meat and and use it but um, if we say, oh, if it was at the time of, and I'd like to hear, you know, I'd like to hear the um, the audio because sometimes the context is really important. And this is, we've talked about this before, that um, that's a danger of just saying, okay, this is what he said in an audio or video. First of all, we have multiple examples of how his understanding evolved and was later revised. Um, and second of all, we need to have the context, we need to have the right understanding of what he was saying. And maybe that's what that was. That's one example, but it's not maybe inclusive of all the dedication. So yeah, that's one time when people can dedicate. Like if I if I buy a goat, then you know at the time of the slaughter, I can dedicate it to other than God. And then once I slaughter the animal, then I can distribute it. But in that you know like dedicate it, you know like and let people know this is for this idol. But there's other times that. Um, it can be dedicated. People will buy and make like sholazad or food and then dedicate it to their idol and throw a, a gathering or a sofre. And then, um, and so is it then okay to eat that food? I don't think it is. So again, it's in those cases, it's not the food, it's the action. Like we were talking about dividing the um, meat through the uh, game of chance is prohibited. It's the action. It's not the food. It's the action of dedicating to other than God because that's idolatry and that's what's prohibited. God, I mean, for, for people who choose to follow God's guidance, um, we don't want to commit idol worship. We don't want to follow an idol worship. Right. Um, so there's also the example of, so the Arabic, and we know it's tricky about Arabic because meanings can change. Um, they can mean different things in different contexts. 
and th that's the blessing of having the English translation. And Dr. Khalifa could have clarified if that was really the situation. He could have clarified dedicated at the time of slaughter, or um, but he, this is the word that he used: is dedicated. And also, Mary's mother dedicated her before she word. was born. Yeah, we don't need. Yeah, but we don't God. need babies, and that's a different Arabic word. No, but yeah. what I'm saying is that idea of dedication, like. Giving right. something to, to some cause. So, like, sister, just please, please. So, I sent you the article just real quick. Um, I put both audios in the chat. Both times Rashad defines dedication at time of slaughter. Okay? You can check that in the chat. I can put the transcript for you. But even better, I did it better for you. The article that I sent you in a direct message has all the audios and all the materials, even with the audio clips, are ready to play. You just click play and it'll be at the exact spot where Rashad says it. We transcribe them for you. And we have uh, about 26 uh, corpuses or lexicons that shows Ohilla always means time of slaughter. And Rashad never said otherwise. And so that was my whole point with Gallopers is saying, look, Rashad defines Ohilla or dedication at time of slaughter. We want to define the word dedication. If you have anywhere in the translation where he defined, excuse me, if he defined this word differently, please show it to us. But if he never def if he never defined this word differently, then we must resort to where he defined it multiple times in multiple sessions in audios and other places. Um, but, so I put that in the chat, but, and also, mm -hmm. yeah, and also, but maybe, well, go ahead. Sorry, maybe that was what he. I mean, that may, maybe that's the example that came to his mind, and that's one time that people can dedicate things. But again, no, no, no he says it means it. it no, no, he point he, he blatantly says dedication it may not means be. sacrifice. No, no, he straight up says, no, he literally says dedication means sacrifice. And he so, never changed so, that position. So do you think that if people um, buy, you know, some meat, like, uh, you know, I go and I buy some meat and I'm going to throw a, a sofre abul fat and I'm going to put food on there, meat, cholezad, other rice, other if things, that like, meat, all going to be dedicated yeah, to if that an meat, idol if that, and I, yeah, if, and and people can come and eat that, like submitters, it's okay by yeah, God that, to come that, and eat that, that meat. Food? Yeah, if that meat was slaughtered in the name of God, you cannot rededicate it. There's nothing you can do. You can never oh. rededicate meat that's the name of God. And I wanted to say, we don't have any process for dedication of uh, apples, for example. We have no way to yeah. dedicate an apple to God. And Rashad says, you don't dedicate the apple. You just say bismillah and you eat it. He says, for animal products, you slaughter, and you, that's how you dedicate. For everything else, you just say, what about, that and cop, what about that cop um, verse? If I can yeah, that's actually, that's actually so a really good then, point. Let me, let, me, uh, let me chime in. So a couple things. So regarding the crops, and this is in 6136, right? They set aside a portion of their crop. This is no different than 5103, where, in essence, they set aside certain animals that they say these are for our idols. So animals that uh, beget a certain combinations of males and females, uh, animals that are, uh, uh, which will uh, give uh, birth to 10 males in a row. God is saying if you abide by their prohibition, not eating these, you're actually partaking in their idol worship. In 6136, where it sets aside a portion of their crops and their livestock, if you say, okay, we can't eat those, right, then in essence, you're giving the idol worshippers power. And um, it's worth noting, so this comes up a lot, this argument that, oh, 6145 is in the context of uh, livestock, but I, I put the verses. So 6136 is discussing crops and livestock. 6138, again, livestock and crops. Uh, 6139, inside the belly. 6141, crops with different tastes, including olives, pomegranate, and the list goes on, right? And then 6142, all foods in the form of uh, uh, eat from God's provisions to you, right? So this isn't just in the context of meat. 6145 is the only uh, verse out of the four dietary prohibitions, and this is the one that Rashad in every footnote cites, right? So you think about it. You read 6115, it cites Appendix 16 and 6145. You read the appendix, Appendix 16, it cites 6145. You read 2173, it cites 6145, right? This is the most encompassing because this, this is the only verse that says out of all the wahi, all the revelation we receive, the only dietary prohibition for anyone who eats any food, right? This isn't even limited to, uh, it doesn't say anyone who eats meat, right? It's for anyone who eats food is these four things. 
if we come up with a fifth, a sixth, a seventh dietary prohibition, then in essence, we're adding to this very straightforward commandment. And this uses the strongest uh, uh, prohibition. This is the same thing as saying there is no other God beside God, right? This is saying there's no other food beside these four. Um, so these are all, in essence, it's like it's excluding the possibility of coming up with a fifth, a sixth dietary prohibition. Uh, so it's not to be taken lightly. Um, yeah, again, it's like it, there's no case where Rashad, he he uh, changes this uh, understanding. Every single time from the years that he's been preaching this, he's always been saying the same thing. The only thing that happened is years after his passing, you know, some uh, people looked at 6115 and they started making these, uh, ex uh, you know, extractions. They used to say that Halloween candy was prohibited. You know, uh, Pepsi that had the picture of Santa was prohibited. In and out, they used to say John 316 on the bottom of the uh, cups. They said, you know, some people were on the fence. Is that prohibited or not? But none of this had anything to do with the Quranic injunction uh, regarding the dietary prohibitions. And this is what makes the dietary prohibitions so slippery. There's this human tendency to want to over prohibit. That's the reason that God is constantly saying, in essence, you know, the, 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 the problem of the generations of the past, was they prohibited what God did not prohibit. Yeah, definitely. We don't want to prohibit what's not prohibited. And yeah, and mashallah, like Brother Galloper said earlier, we don't want to convince. We just want to share and may God guide us to the correct understanding. And um, and if I'm mistaken, may God forgive me and guide me. I'm just sharing my thoughts and what seems. And we actually recently had extensive discussions on this and um, uh, studies that we do, um, other uh, studies that we do. So I looked at this uh, issue, kind of examined it. So um, so I, I just want to share, um, thank you everyone for sharing your thoughts. And I just quickly want to share a few thoughts. Um, so 136, what I'm seeing here is that um, because, you know, we don't want to get caught up in semantics. We want to understand really the concept um, behind it. So here, my understanding is these people in 136, they even set aside a share of God's provisions of crops and livestock, saying this share belongs to God, according to their claims, and this share belongs to our idols. Um, so they're, in a way, dedicating this food, part of it to God and part of it to idols. Um, and then 5138, that's a different, so these people so, are, are dedicating. Can we just respond to this point? Can we just respond to this point? So these guys set aside their crops and livestock to their idols, and then they prohibited those crops and livestock for everyone. So if you're saying you're also agreeing with them that it's prohibited, you're agreeing with the idol worshipers. Now, keep in mind something that's really interesting. You need to let her finish. You need to let her finish. Oh, Thank you. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Did I you don't want to make another you know, point I, on that? Yeah, I, you know, I don't, I don't want to, you know, I think the, I don't know how useful it is to go back and forth. I think to me, it's like each person presents their understanding and then we can all reflect on it and each person can, um, uh, each person can kind of consider what they think is right and follow that. Um, God is the one who guides. Thank you, Brother Gallopers, also for what you had shared earlier and um, uh, Brother Rizwan as well. Um, so, um, yeah, so these, um, so what, my, this is my understanding of this verse that they are, they're dedicating like one, one share to God, one share to idols. And then it's interesting is however, what was set aside for their idols never reached God while the share they set aside for God and really went to their idols. Um, and so five, one thirty eight, I think is a different issue. Um, that means six, one thirty eight. Five one three. Five one three. Yeah, I mean five one three. Yes, five one three. Right. So in five one three, they they devoted their animals to idols, and God is saying it's lawful to eat. You're saying it's prohibited. No, five one three. I think God is telling yeah. us something different. Uh, I mean, what is God? This is a different. This is a different issue. So in the the previous verse, God is saying these people dedicated part of you know part of their provisions. It was crops and livestock. To other than God, and then dedicated part to God, but it's not going to be accepted by God because no, they're, they're committing idol worship. You're in the wrong they're... chapter. You're in the wrong chapter, sister. You're talking about five one hundred three is where they devoted their animals to idols. No, 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 no. I, I haven't gotten to five one hundred three. I haven't gotten to five one hundred three yet. Okay. So <laughs> what, what verse okay. are you talking so, about in chapter okay. five? So 
right now I was talking about 6136, that this verse is saying, like, this is also dedication. These people are dedicating, and it's crops and livestock. Where are you getting the point. word dedication from? Where are you getting that word? Well, even if the word is not there, it's the concept. They're setting aside a share of their um, provisions, which is livestock and crops, uh, uh, and, and they're setting it that? aside. They're, they're setting it. They're, they're giving it to their idols. So that's idolatry. Right, which but, God says, right, don't come and, so and what does Muhammad so, tell them? He says it's not prohibited. I think we need to understand the context. You mentioned context is really important. From 136 to 145 is an ongoing conversation back and forth between the idol worshippers and Muhammad. So they're saying these things are prohibited. Then they're saying, uh, I'm sorry, they're saying these things are set aside for idols. Then they're saying they're prohibited. No one she does. I'm sorry, Jeff. I'm muting you because there's some noise coming. Okay, uh, so then so, they're saying so, that it's prohibited. Hold on, it's back and forth. Then Muhammad says, okay, if you're saying it's prohibited, which ones is it? And they're saying this and that. And then it all concludes with 6145 with Muhammad telling them, no. Out of all the foods on earth, only these four are prohibited. So Muhammad is telling them, so the context is all foods, very clearly. It's all foods. And even the verse is any food. If we're going to uh, interpret any food to mean only meat, then that's a big problem. The only verse in the Quran that mentions any food is 6145. Interestingly enough, 16115 doesn't say any food. It just says food. But 6145 says any food. And we are to believe that, no, this is not about any food. Even though the subtitle of that verse is correctly uh, determined by Rashad and labeled as the only dietary prohibitions, meaning the only things that are prohibited for you to eat. It's not talking about animal products. It's saying the only dietary prohibitions and the verse says any food. So this is a conversation back and forth. They're prohibiting a bunch of stuff. They're saying this stuff is set aside for idols. You guys are prohibited. Don't eat it. And Muhammad's telling them, no, only animal products are prohibited. You see? So we need to obey God. We need to obey Muhammad. This is the messenger of God speaking on behalf of God. And he's telling us that don't obey the idol worshipers, that they're saying these crops are set aside and they're prohibited. No. Only animal products are prohibited, and that's exactly his response to all their claims from 6136 all the way consummating and 6145. So, sorry, if I can just kind of make my comment and, and present my thoughts, and then each person can think about it. Um, and so then that way we don't kind of repeat. Um, uh, so, yeah, I guess um, let me, I'll just try to quickly kind of concisely make my points. Um, so 136, my understanding is God is saying, don't do this. Like the subtitle by Dr. Khalif is abusing God's provision. So these people are abusing God's provisions. And my understanding is it's the concepts that are important and they're dedicating part of their provisions, uh, which is crops and livestock to other than God. And, and that's not good. Um, and then for 145, I just want to clarify that the context, the context is if we look at, if we say the context goes, you know, way back, then where do we draw the line? But if we look at the right last there. two verses, if right we look there. at the no, last two. No, because you're two, arbitrarily, you're arbitrarily choosing two verses. Don't do but, that. but I'm not, I'm not, I'm not being able to speak and present my thoughts. You asked the question. If I, I can't do that. It was, it was. Nabeed, a Nabeed, you need to, you need to stop interrupting people. Speak. It's really irritating. Please. I'm sorry. She asked the question. I just wanted to no, answer but the you're, question. You're not letting speak it's not nice we'll let, let people finish their comments this is a very important thing maybe that you really need to reflect on this you know i understand you guys work really hard run the server and everything but we're not the gates gatekeepers of the truth let everybody we're all submitters here let everybody express their thoughts we sure everybody's an adult we all learn from each other and i apologize not it was a misunderstanding i thought she asked me thank a question. you we all learn from each other answer. I understand. Bless. I Thank just, you. I thought it was a dialogue. She asked a okay. question. I just wanted to provide a quick. No answer. problem. God bless you. Okay. Please no finish problem. your point. Thank Go ahead. You. Thank you. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I think it's it's good to let people kind of, and then afterwards people can comment. Um, thank you all. Um, so yeah. So so, my thought is that the context, like looking at the, because sometimes the subtitles, just by looking at the previous like one or two verses. I can understand the subtitles, what Dr. Khalif is saying. That's the, you know, that's what seems like the the context of, of that verse um, to me, of that verse is looking at the last couple of verses. So 145, we look at the last couple of them, it's talking about livestock. 
115, if we look at 16, 115, if we look at the last verse, it's talking about, um, I mean, to be consistent, the last couple of verses, uh, 114 is talking about provisions, 113 is, is, is talking about something else. So if we look at the last couple of verses before that, it's talking about a general sense, a, a general term, provisions. And that's why 115, it comes back to food. It's something more general. Um, and then uh, my point about 5103 was that it's um, that's a different uh, topic. I, I mean, that's a different uh, thing that God is saying, you know, along with these are things that God did not prohibit. Uh, and so because people have prohibited all these other things, God is saying these are not prohibitions. He's clarifying. So there's a verse, I think it's verse 16, verse 64, where God says the Quran clarifies things that have been disputed. So if things have come up, then God addresses them in the Quran. And because people have added all these prohibitions, in 5.103, God is saying these things are not prohibited. Um, and then the appendix was referred to. So appendix 16, um, the end of the appendix, um, the second paragraph, the end of it says, the Quran specifically prohibits four meats and the reference verses. So here it's saying specifically prohibits four meats. Um, uh, and then 6142 to 145 is listed and 16112 is listed. Interestingly, 16115 is not listed because here it's talking about the four meats. Um, so, um, yeah, thank you for letting Okay, let's me address that. Let's, let's start. God bless you. Hey, let's go backwards. Can I just address the last point that was made and you could address the other parts, inshallah. So the footnote of 2172, 2173, I put it in the chat. Okay, it says throughout the Quran, only four meats are prohibited. And then it references 6145 and it references 16115. Okay, so here, 16115 is directly connected to the four meats being prohibited. Which, then the next which, sentence... Which, sorry, which, which verse was that? I put it in the chat. It's the footnote of 2172. And then the following sentence is even more clear. It says dietary prohibitions beyond these four are tantamount to idol worship. What are these four? The four meats. It's saying throughout the Quran, only four meats are prohibited. Dietary prohibitions, meaning prohibiting anything you eat beyond these four is idol worship. So this is so clear by the messenger of the covenant. He's telling you very blatantly, clearly, and directly that if we prohibit anything outside of the four meats, we're going to be committing idol worship. And he even cites 16115. This is amazing. It's just really amazing. But the last point I wanted to make, I'll give it to Brother Jude. Really, it comes down to what's your definition of dedication. Based on what we're observing, we have a very clear-cut, exact, specific, and definite definition of dedication. But if we're going to go with this open-ended ownership, not ownership, no time-based, it's just kind of up in the air. It's at the dinner table. It's at the butcher house. It's at any time, at any point, in any manner, manner or method. We're really not consistent with what God is teaching the Quran. And praise God for sending a messenger that clearly defined dedicate for us in the Quran as time of slaughter. And praise God, we're not going to expand it beyond what is uh, uh, necessarily distinguished and determined as what dedication means. Because you need to provide a very clear and concise definition of dedicate. If you cannot, then, there, then there's a problem with that approach and there's a problem with that overall understanding. Go ahead, brother, dude. Thank you, sorry. I just wanted to, to say, so two things. So this reference in 6136 regarding setting aside a portion of their uh, uh, crops and then same thing with 5103, you know, they, they uh, dedicate their uh, uh, livestock to, you know, this, uh, to make it prohibited. The concept from all this is that this food, at the end of the day, is not prohibited. That's the takeaway I get. This this individual who's committing the sin by setting aside a portion of their crops, or the individual who's saying, you know, baria, uh, the livestock that's uh, uh, liberated by an oath, is prohibited. Both these, God is saying, it's not prohibited. Uh, this is similar to the example of dividing the meat through a game of chance. This action is prohibited. The meat itself is not prohibited. If we say that meat divided through a game of chance is a prohibition, then we've just created a fourth dietary prohibition. This is the importance of six. Fifth, fifth, fifth. 
Sorry, this is the importance of uh, 6145, is that this is saying, and again, it's not saying, hey, meat or uh, even livestock. It's saying out of all the revelations, this includes every single uh, revelation that all of God's messengers received. The only dietary prohibitions for anyone who eats food, this means any food, right? It's not anyone who eats meat or livestock, right? It's any food is these four. If we say that Rashad got additional revelations, told him that it's no, there's additional categories beyond these four, it contradicts the very uh, foundation of this verse. If we say there's some other food outside of what's mentioned specifically in this verse, we're creating a, a, a fifth dietary prohibition. That's the reason that like something with it regarding the dietary prohibition that Rashad is constantly saying, like, look, this is tantamount to idol worship. Because every avenue of creating a fifth one has been locked out. This is like saying the same thing. It's literally, it's the same structure as there is no other God beside God. But if all of a sudden someone says, well, what about this little God? What about this other God? What about this edge case of a God? It's like, no, that statement has early eradicated the possibility of any other God with a lowercase g besides God with a capital G. Can you just reemphasize the point that in 5103, these are animals devoted to idols, and God is saying we can eat them. I don't know if we actually process that point. The reason we can eat them because they haven't been slaughtered yet. They've yeah. had these animals working on farms and stuff. They've been liberated for their idols, and they're saying no one can eat them. These are animals devoted to idols, literally set for their idols, and God's saying it's not prohibited for us to eat. What does that tell us? That means the prohibition doesn't happen until the time of slaughter. These animals have not been slaughtered yet. So as long as you slaughter that, it's been slaughtered in no name or it's been slaughtered in the name of God, you can eat it. But God is telling us that these animals in 5103, they're not prohibited for us to eat, even though they're set aside and fully devoted to the idols. It's definitely involved in the act of idol worship. So how is that possible? It's possible because dedication oh, in the context little, of food maybe, only maybe, happens maybe. in kind of context of uh uh slaughter go ahead um, the dude maybe it, like there is actually a story that that could have uh, kind of explains it also um i don't know maybe it is maybe uh, it isn't but when i look to cain and abel and uh how the the offerings are accepted and not accepted accepted maybe there's also even a um how do you call it a, a parallel or a, an explanation on why certain things are and uh, why certain things uh, can't be dedicated. I don't know, but- Do you um, want to expand on that? Yeah, expand on the uh, Cain and Abel. I think that's interesting. <laughs> because uh, as far as I, uh, I remember from uh, uh, my studies is that uh, Cain offered, um, I think, wheat, um, and Abel uh, offered uh, uh, firstborn lamb, I think. Uh, um, and the wheat was not uh, accepted, but the lamb uh, was accepted as an offering. Uh, later on, Cain kill, uh, kills uh, Abel, but uh, aside of that, it uh, seems like if you want to dedicate in the, in the manner that God will accept it, uh, wheat or um, any plant materials and these kinds of things are not accepted. And when it comes to, uh, how do you call it, the, the, the instance, this, this, yeah, this life in essence is sacrificed. Uh, it, it has to be life in essence, and it has to be sacrificed to 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 God to be accepted at the end. Which makes me conclude that that's... anything that has not died yet, so it has been reserved in some pasture. Yeah, I can I can eat that. Uh, if it's a, a, a wedding cake, uh, and, and the, uh, I don't know, somebody is uh, has secretly uh, put uh, I don't know uh, dedicated it to uh, uh, Odin. Um, I still can 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 eat that because it's, that's it's a, cake. It's, uh... God bless you. That's a really good point. So for anyone that missed it, the, the offering of animal was accepted uh, by God and the offering of the, the fruit or the crops was not accepted in that example. And this causes Cain to kill his brother Abel in that story. Um, so I think, that, I think that's actually a really interesting uh, – sorry, brother, dude, were you going to speak? I can go after you. No, no, good, good. Um, I think that's actually a really interesting uh, example because that, again, it's 
So when we look up definition of dedicate, again, Dr. Khalisa translated this as, as dedicate, um, the quality of being dedicated or committed to a task or purpose. Um, for example, the action of dedicating a church or other building. Um, so it's devoting something um, to a task or a purpose or uh, in some cause. Um, uh, so in this case, the um, we, we have this example that um, someone dedicated um, other than an animal to God, but then what we learn in the Quran is that um, God accepts from the righteous. So my understanding is that it was not what was being offered, but it was the righteousness that um, that caused it to be accepted from one brother and not from the other. It wasn't the food. It was the righteousness. I'll see if I can find that verse. But but the example shows that different things can be dedicated. No, but the, the bottom line yeah. is Rashad defines dedication yes, as sacrifice. Yes, yes. The, it doesn't the, matter. Uh, it doesn't I, I matter. Am very much agree. Sorry. Oh. Um, anyway, I think also when I when I when I when I read it, it was indeed about the, the righteousness, and um, especially because I think Cain, um, yeah, just took some crops, and and Abel actually. Um, took the firstborn, took uh, the the fattest and the 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 most yeah the best of his uh, of of his uh, animals and indeed I I do agree but for some reason if I if I look at it also in a yeah maybe deeper meaning I, that's why I uh, asked for uh, an opinion rather than uh, um, as a statement uh, that was a question but thank you that's that's indeed uh, true what you're saying but uh, yeah, yeah I was just. Thanks. I was just going to say the bottom line is, look, if I have to decide between a definition, I guess she looked up Webster's Dictionary or something like that versus the definition that God's messenger gives. I'm going to go with the God's messenger, inshallah. I don't care what Webster's uh, Dictionary defines dedication. Rashad Khalifa was a messenger of God. We have multiple instances where he defined dedication at time of slaughter for us. We don't need to resort to these English language dictionaries. We resort to whatever God's teachings are through the messenger. And he makes it very clear, dedication means sacrifice. If I'm going to go outside of that and go to these Webster's dictionaries, who which never includes the term sacrifice, in terms of sacrificing an animal, then I'm going to be misled. And Sister Medina was right. This is a big test. Are we going to treat these specific words as literal uh, uh, dictation from God? Or are we going to take the teachings of the messenger where he explains these concepts, expands on them, and tells us the meaning of the words being used. This is a big test for us, you see? And so Rashad very clearly says, dedication means sacrifice. You're saying no, it means something else. And so now we have to decide how, how we want to approach this. What's that? My brother Nabi. I was just going to ask uh, to make a comment once you, you were done. Go ahead, please. Thank you. I was just going to say that, uh, I don't know. I think sometimes when we do that, we inflate things uh, bigger than they should be, and they become divisive tools, tools of division. Um, I, When I look at it in terms of my life, um, you know, am I going out and eating food dedicated to, to God? Like, what, where is the harm, right? The harm is to my soul. I'm giving power to something that is undue credit. It's not really God's. Now, the the outcome of this discussion, is it is it um, a really big deal? Maybe, maybe not. Um, maybe it's just a portion of the understanding that helps us get to what practices help our soul, what practices harm our soul, um, and how we want to conduct ourselves in daily life. Or if I walk into a kid's birthday party and I, you know, throw his cake on the floor and I'm like, this is not, this is dedicated to other than God. Um, how dare you? Uh, so I guess what I mean is let's keep it in perspective as well. Let's not use it as a, I'm not saying that that's what's happening. I'm saying that could happen. Um, a tool of bigger than it, than it actually is. What is the actual impact to a human, to my soul in understanding this the right way or not understanding it or, or even saying i'm not sure i'm still learning i'm still trying to understand this but in my day-to-day -day life 
I'm not coming across this harm uh, three times a day, five times a day. Um, I don't know when the last time this uh, issue came came up in my life. I mean, I'm sure it's happened. Uh, but yeah, I just wanted to, to make that point. Okay. Thank you. I think this issue is really nice topic in a sense that I think it can address many other issues that we can have and as submitters in the future that we can all learn to, you know, just accept each other's understanding and God willing move on. I, I don't think we need to be in a position that we need to convince somebody one way or the other. And the fact that we're talking about this subject about an hour uh, kind of is a testament for that. It's okay. I mean, it's a much of a beautiful thing I learned from everybody. Some beautiful verses were shared. And I think this can this could be a hallmark uh, example for other topics, right? Ultimately, we just have to present and move on, right? And God willing, if somebody's wrong, <laughs> we'll, God will guide us, not us. This is really, Thank you. I wanted to say I agree with Brother Rizwan in the sense that I'm not facing anim- like situations where I'm like purchasing or getting involved with animals that were sacrificed in the name of idols. I agree with you. That's not practical. But there's a bigger lesson to learn here. And this is, I think, what Brother Gallup is referring to. There's a principle in the Quran that whenever you have a dispute, we refer to a messenger. This is a prime example and a good way to utilize this amazing process that God provided us. So now we read this verse, 16.115, okay? And obviously, I'm interpreting food one way, and someone else is interpreting another way. The way to resolve this and on many other topics is to refer to the messenger. So praise God, God sent a messenger to address this topic in, in good detail in Appendix 16. So then we refer to Appendix 16. And the conclusion of Appendix 16 at the end of the second paragraph is that there's only four meats prohibited. Nowhere in this uh, appendix does he say any food can be prohibited or all foods can be prohibited. Furthermore, we go to another uh, resource from the messenger. We refer, okay, we say, well, we looked at that. We go to the Essentials of Submission video. He explains what's prohibited. He says, yeah, it's only four meats that are prohibited. Okay, that's pretty nice. We go to another audio. This guy calls the masjid. He says, you know, I don't want a Christian turkey. I want Thanksgiving. I want a Muslim turkey. He says it's only Christian if they say Jesus at the time of slaughter. Oh, that's another piece of evidence. Then I go to another audio, and he says, yeah, dedication is a time of sacrifice. Oh, so you see, we had an initial dispute, a disagreement about a verse, but then we did what God asked us to do, and that was refer to the messenger, and he's always using the Quran, but he's giving the correct interpretation of the Quran. So every time we refer to the messenger in the footnotes, in the appendices, in the uh, uh, subheadings, in the written materials, in the um, audios, in the videos, Everywhere we checked, he said it's always in the context of uh, animal products. And he says for animal products, there's dedication. And then for everything else, he says you just say Bismillah, you say God's name, and you eat it. That's it. So if I want to witness, yeah, go ahead. So when you say, uh, you know, you defer to the, it refers to the messenger. So you think the Quran is telling me that today, you know, whatever the state is, 2022, I'm supposed to. Yeah, so you see that as I'm supposed to go look up appendices, footnotes, or so you don't see it as when a per, the messenger was allowed or a messenger no. allowed. That's what it's referring to. You're saying that it's all encompassing forever until another yes. messenger maybe? Until 2280. I, I, I disagree. But, okay. So, Thank for you. example, we have a dispute about doing the Nia for Wudu. Rashad in the video says do Nia. I say, no, that's a dumb idea. We shouldn't do Nia. You say we should do Nia. So what do we do? We refer to the messenger. He says, no, you must do your niya before you do your wudu. So that's it. It doesn't matter. But if he's not a messenger that, at the moment. No, of course it matters. That teaching. That I mean, teaching this is a big discussion. But yeah, 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 yeah. I was just going to say that this teaching doesn't discussion. die. That instruction for the wudu doesn't die when the messenger dies. We shouldn't focus on the body. We're not dependent on the body of a human being. These are teachings that God sent him and delivered to us. The teachings don't die when the human body dies. Our religious teachings from God are not dependent on the heartbeat of a man. So if he is alive today correct. and then his heart the stops Quran. beating tomorrow, what's that? I'll just give I it said a correct. Quick. They're in the Quran, right? No, no, no. But this even... is a practice that predates the Quran. Doing the intention, it predates the Quran. This is from Abraham. So doing the niyyah for the wudu is actually not explicitly mentioned in the Quran. It's a practice that's passed down from Prophet Abraham to us. 
So if when could, the messenger of God tells me that this is a practice that we do, we just do it. It doesn't matter if it's better or not. This, I differ on this because this is a really big, this is a really big discussion. So yeah, I, I, I just wanted to kind of understand your, your point of view on this. So thank you. God bless you. I mean, it's the, you know, the, the concept is we're not going to go in and say, oh, you know, some passing comment from the, the, the messenger and build doctrine. I think that's the, the, the fundamental wrong approach. When, you know, Rashad, he, he sets, uh, you know, in essence, a, a time aside uh, to produce, you know, a video, an article, uh, a, a appendix on some subject. He's trying to clarify, like, say, for instance, we have this uh, discussion regarding what is intoxicants, right? And we have people that are like, well, look, it's just wine. That's it. You know, meaning any other form of intoxication is fine because khamar in the Quran is used typically in the context of wine. And we say, okay, well, let's see what the, the, the messenger had to say about the subject, right? And he, he, he specifies that anything that uh, uh, covers the, uh, the, the, the mind, and he goes and, you know, gives some uh, uh, details, you know, this erratic uh, um, uh, basically clarifies that something like cocaine is an intoxicant, right? But if we go with this interpretation that, yeah, once the, the, the messenger passed, then in essence, anything he uh, taught or he clarified on, we can just put in the waste bin. I think that's the, the, the wrong approach, because then what's the function of the messenger? You know, he comes, he says, hey, look, follow the Quran. And OK, now, I'll, you know, go do it. <laughs> figure it out for yourself. Agreed. Agreed. Uh, it doesn't resolve, yeah. you know, the, the, the years of these disputes that, you know, have been uh, lingering. You know, is it wash your feet or is it wipe your feet? Uh, you know, and there's there's a, a bunch of these. Not that Rashad covered every single, you know, dispute. There's a fair number of them that he gave, you know, very clear, uh, uh, you know, uh, input on. And the dietary prohibitions is, is one of those. Like we have, you know, dozens of uh, uh, articles, audios, videos, uh, footnotes, you know, appendices that, that it specified what his uh, thoughts were towards these dietary prohibitions. Every single time that I've seen thus far to date, it's always in the context of uh, meat and animal products, right? Not once is it in the context of oranges or apples or celery or anything else. Um, so yeah, Rishon, just, did you have on. a did you have a comment that you I had a comment, but I I just um, wanted to see if Rishon, if you had a comment to make, I'd like to hear that as well. I appreciate that. I, I guess I would just say that I I don't think the dustbin approach is a good idea because you are falling into being unappreciative. Um, I also want to not fall into idol worship or uphold, uh, you know, other than the Quran. So in light of the Quran, but again, yeah, this is a big, big topic. Thank you for allowing me. Praise God. Yeah, and my comment is actually um, along the same lines. I think Satan can push us to the two extremes, like some people saying, oh no, totally disregard. Um, uh, and their blessings. I mean, their clarifications and their blessings. Um, at the same time, uh, we know that our source of law and guidance is the Quran. We know that God is the teacher of the Quran. We know it's God that guides. Um, these are all verses based on verses of the Quran. We know that um, it's only the sincere that can understand the Quran. And of course, we want to use our faculties to understand as well, as well as seeking guidance from God. So I think um, Brother Navid himself said in another study that, okay, you know, of course we, we take what Dr. Khalif has given us, but it may not be all inclusive. So perhaps in these audios, videos, um, again, the context is important. Perhaps this is what was discussed and was referred to because this is what's common or based on the questions or whatever the situation was. But um, I think that it's important, like the Quran is our source of um, law. Um, the other thought that I had about um, the 2172, so uh, 16115 is um, addressed because that verse also talks about the, um, it talks about the meats that are prohibited. Um, and perhaps the, the answer is that, um, if I can bring up the verse that I was going to refer to again. Um, uh, yeah, actually, I, I'm going to I'm going to stop here. Yeah. May God um, may God make it clear for us. 
I think we also need to use like the brain that God has given us and think about, okay, if, if there is a, you know, a sofria apple fads or something, would we go to eat, uh, would we go to it and eat that food? Do we really think that that um, food is okay for us to um, eat? Again, it's not the food, but because of the, um, because of the dedication, which, you know, again, I know it comes back to how we understand it. And um, I looked up another definition as well that says, uh, this is Collins English Dictionary, state of being devoted to a particular purpose or cause. So state of being devoted to a particular purpose or cause. And again, what Dr. Khalifa said, you know, maybe he was giving this common, you know, something that happens commonly um, uh, in reference to animals. But again, it may not be all uh, inclusive. Um, and I also agree with Rezwa on this point of like, we, we really want to focus, you know, of course, we can discuss these different things and express understandings. At the same time, it's good to focus on things that are really important in our lives and, and that we can apply and use in our lives as well. Um, so, yeah, I just wanted to uh, say that, you know, I appreciated that point and reminder. Thank you. Uh, a totally separate point that Brother Jude made. I know, Sister Far, you don't follow the chat. I would highly encourage that you do because a lot of great information in there that gets shared by everyone. But a point Brother Jude made that was really nice. In the Arabic language, when you add the letter meme to uh, uh, an act, it becomes a location. So, for example, sajda uh, or sujud, which means prostration, when you become an, we put meme at the beginning of masjid, it becomes place of prostration. Now, similarly, we have this word ohilla. When you add the meme at the beginning, it's mahalla. It's not ohilla. It's, it's, it's uh, uh, halal. So halal. In, halal. Uh, yeah, yeah. So in Arabic, you have haram and halal, right? Haram is prohibited. Halal is lawful. Right. But you, right, but you said when you add the meme, it becomes yeah. place of slaughter, correct? Correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It goes so, to show that the the concept of uh, halal and haram, right, in the, uh, the 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 Quran, in the context of dietary prohibitions, again, it's always in the the context of uh, uh, animal products. Um, we don't have, in essence, this concept of uh, again, you know, any fruits or vegetables or something like that being uh, prohibited. Um, that it just doesn't uh, exist. And this is kind of the same point that it's like you know when it specifies the dietary prohibitions. It's, oh, it doesn't say, you know, livestock, but it's clear, you know, carry on only applies to livestock. Running blood only applies to livestock. You know, similarly, uhilla only applies to livestock. Uh, that word does not apply to apples and oranges. Um, the other thing that just wanted to chime in regarding like Ferry's comment is, uh, look, God gives us this example in the Quran of uh, meat divided through a game of chance, right? That action is prohibited, but the meat itself isn't. So someone who's doing a uh, um, an idol worshiping ceremony uh, for their idols, right? That act is prohibited. Food there, right? Assuming it's not some animal that was slaughtered in the name of other than God, is lawful. But again, I'm not going to approach the altars of idols. Therefore, I would never, you know, uh, be eating that food. If let's say tomorrow somehow that food gets packaged, it gets sent out, ends up on my doorstep, I simply say Bismillah and I eat it. Uh, that's the thing is we have to be able to uh, identify what it is that's actually prohibited. Uh, 6136, 5.103 is again showing that these are actions that are prohibited around food. But the food itself, again, if it's not one of these four, we can't say that that's prohibited. We'd be creating either a fifth dietary what prohibition about, or a contradiction with 6135. What, what about if someone says a tree, an apple tree is dedicated to Jesus? Does that mean... Until that tree dies, every apple that is ever produced from that tree is prohibited for us to eat. You see, this is what happens when we get to this loosey-goosey kind of open-ended definition of dedication, right? Because then 100 years can go by, that tree's still alive, and we're going to say, oh, no, someone 100 years ago said this tree's for Jesus, so it's still dedicated. Those apples are prohibited. You know, it's just, it, it, it doesn't make sense. It's not logical. And again, in the audios, Rashad is talking about in the context of all fruits, when he says uh, dedication means sacrifice. And what's interesting is when he mentions that, he says, mention is something else. Mention is for all fruits. You say, Bismillah, eat it. But dedication is for sacrifice. 
So it's not in some kind of limited context the way Sister Fari is proposing as a possibility. No. He says it very clearly. Actually, if you listen to the audio and we put the transcript, he said, look, for animal products, you sacrifice it. You, what sacrifice is, is, he actually defines it even further. Not only does he say dedication means sacrifice, he says dedication in the form of sacrifice is actually the per, taking permission from God to take the life of the animal. He says that's what dedication is. That's what sacrifice is. Now, for all other foods, he says eggs, milk, you know, other stuff. He says, just say Bismillah and just eat it. But he says, mention is something else. Mention is for all foods. But dedication and sacrifice is only for animal products. And I really urge you, I sent you a direct message with all of those references. I, I really urge you to just look at those carefully and listen to those others for yourself. So you know for a fact, the context is not some kind of isolated, limited context or some passing comment that he's saying, no, no, no. This is just some, you know, this is in this situation. No, he makes it very clear. It's an open, an open and an overall concept of what dedication actually is. And so Rashad's definition of dedication supersedes and overrides what Webster's dictionary or any English language dictionary tries to teach us. Thanks. Yeah, I think it's good to not kind of go back and forth. I think it's good that, you know, once the information is presented, then, you know, each person can kind of reflect and decide for themselves. Thanks. By the way, I wanted to make a comment regarding uh, um, five, six uh, as well. Um, in five, six, we have the, uh, the steps for abolition, right? And again, it's one of these like very clear cut uh, commandments and it, it's it's interesting you talk to a, a traditionalist you know they're one of their justifications for hadith is they say hey we need the hadith so we know how to do salat and the uh, uh, irony of that is the hadith doesn't explain in detail how to do the salat right uh, there is no one single hadith or let alone compilation of hadith you can give to someone and they can basically know exactly what they're supposed to do for their uh, salat um uh, that said you know the the, the argument back Okay, well, if God said it in the Quran, would you follow it? You know, and most people uh, apprehensively, traditionalists will say, oh, yeah, yeah. It's like, okay, well, you do your ablution. And then, you know, sure enough, they add, uh, you know, some uh, 8 to 11 steps, uh, if not more, depending on how you count them. And what's fascinating is they don't even do it in the order, right? It's not like they, because they say, oh, this is uh, uh, supplementary. It's like, a, it's extra. The funny thing is they actually change the order when they do their uh, ablution. It's as if it's like, if, if that was the case, they say, okay, these are what's fair, this is what's obligatory, and then we're adding these extra steps because this is just, you know, going above and beyond. Uh, that would hold some, you know, I wouldn't agree with it, but at least it'd be consistent. But the fact that they actually change the step, because the first step they make, they say you wash your hands, and then you wash your face, and then you wash your uh, uh, ears, uh, nose, uh, you know, uh, behind the neck, if I'm not mistaken. It's like they, they've altered the steps that are even specified in the Quran. You think of the, the absurdity of this. You know, God gave the prophet these specific uh, steps, and they have the audacity to say that, oh, he rejected this and went on and did his own thing. And not to mention that this is the uh, 112th revelation, meaning this was one of the last revelations given to the prophet. I think that they were saying that, oh, after this was given, you know, he was given additional commandments to add or alter these steps. Uh, the absurdity of that. It's like, no, this isn't like, you know, this is uh, specified that this is what the uh, uh, abolition is. And, you know, not to mention that these, all these practices came from Abraham. Uh, the, the... Okay. No, 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 please finish your comment. I was going to uh, talk about something else. Yeah, I mean, I'll just continue talking about the, uh, the, the, the verses. So in the vein of the dietary prohibitions, one of the things that they do, again, is uh, traditionalists will add additional uh, prohibitions beyond specified in the Quran. And one of the common ones is that it has to be slaughtered a certain way. That you have to hang it uh, in a so first you face it towards the 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 fibla, then you slaughter it, you drain its blood, hang it upside down. You know, there's this entire process to go through. 
by all means, if there's a uh, more efficient, uh, you know, um, uh, civil way of slaughtering animal, that's great. To say that that becomes a requirement, it's, it's not specified in the uh, religion. Um, and this is the way that it just creeps in, you know, these these tidbits. Some of the stuff just sounds good. Like when I go and I see or uh, the demonstration as far as how it's like uh, halal animals are sacrificed, it's awesome, right? It's like it's done in a very humane manner. To say that that becomes, you know, the, the religious decree uh, that if it's not slaughtered in the specific way, therefore you can't eat it. You know, it just shows how it seems so right to want to prohibit stuff, but we have to stick with what God says. I was just going to say, there's a lot of new people here. If they have any questions, there's open, you know, we're now can ask open questions. I see brother um, Aaron is here. He's new. Anthony. Um, let's see. Uh, brother uh, Mali and uh, others also. So please, if you have any questions or comments, I know you're learning about submission. If you want to ask anything, now is a great time. There's a lot of qualified individuals here who will be able to give good answers. So please come up and ask any questions you have. I just want to say I'm heading out. Uh, peace be upon you all, and may God bless. Bless you. God bless you, sister. Assalamu alaikum. Peace be upon you. Keep rattling until uh, someone else wants to, to, to chime in, but... Um, in verse 4, right, this is actually really uh, uh, profound. So the Hadith literature, for whatever reason, they have this uh, this, uh, this spitement towards uh, dogs. Uh, there's actually Hadith that said, you know, the prophet, he found the, uh, uh, he was waiting for Angel Gabriel and he never showed up. Then he found a small puppy underneath the bed and uh, he immediately killed it and made a commandment to kill all the dogs. Uh, and then the next day, the uh, uh, angel came and he said, you know, where were you? He says, I do not enter homes that there's uh, dogs in there, right? Um, so for whatever reason, you know, the, the uh, uh, Hadith literature just uh, hates dogs. What's funny is they considered them uh, um, uh, najes, uh, what's the, the tr contaminated, right? You look at 5.4, it says, uh, lawful for you are all good things, including what trained dogs <laughs> and falcons catch for you. If dogs were considered uh, 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 which is like, you know, in essence, like, oh, you shall avoid, this is like a, an abomination. The fact that, you know, they don't kill this animal with their paws, right? They, they, they bite it. The saliva is getting on that animal and it's uh, uh, slaughtering it. And God is saying that this is lawful for us to eat. Um, again, it, it just destroys this entire narrative that they have uh, towards this, you know, amazing creature that God has given us. Like the relation between humans and dogs is so profound you know that taking this animal this wolf right that's designed to hunt to to, to locate to, to to take orders to uh whatnot domesticated to the point that it becomes so dependent on the human being and you know here's these people who are prohibiting this awesome creation of god this awesome uh companionship uh, because of their uh, hadith literature Uh, Bremises, Br I'm sorry, Bremen says, peace be upon you. Welcome back to the submission server. Can you uh, hey. come up and ask your question? Uh, I, I remember all the questions I have. I have no problem. Any of them. You can, I know even if you have 10, you can ask three of them right now. No problem. There's a lot of qualified individuals uh, ready on standby to just address any questions by God's leave. So I know you're asking some questions earlier. Go ahead, please. Uh, well, you said uh, that uh, there is no sunnah, right? Yeah, the only sunnah is God's sunnah. But in terms of like trying to emulate the prophet, in terms of like what foot did he use to enter the toilet or lick his fingers and the plate after uh, finishing a meal? No, we don't. There's no such thing. Uh, so like, uh, and you think that the only commands we have is the Quran? That's right. It's the book of law. It's the Furqan. It's our book you, of law. But like, what if like you were living uh, during the Prophet's time, peace be upon him, and he was telling you to do stuff that yeah, isn't I mean, necessarily if he in the Quran? You to, yeah, if he orders you to do something, that's different. But those orders are not, uh, uh, I guess they're not religious teachings. They're orders. We're, we're instructed to obey the prophet in all the orders that he gives us. So, for example, he gives battle 
um, positions. He gives um, he got he got specific tests in terms of commands that were limited to those people. There's specific orders that he received, but in terms of religious teachings and religious laws, the only thing that's binding upon us after the death of the prophet is the Quran itself. Well, how do you know if something is uh, halal or haram? If... I use the Quran. I use the Quran to determine what is haram or halal. Praise God, it's an amazing book, and it details uh, whatever is prohibited or lawful for my usage. Did you want to say something, brother Jeff? I see you're unmuted and breathing. Yeah, yeah, I, I Go did. Ahead, yeah, I was gonna br bring up another controversial topic. Uh, so, so I don't see anywhere in Dr. Khalifa's explanations, or, or of course not in the Quran either, any justification for the idea that your wudu can last from one period to the next period. Uh, let me. I'd love to hear other people discuss this. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Controversy. So the the concept is uh, this breaking of evolution, right? If if we say, for instance, that yeah, if you have to do it every uh, uh, time you do so lot, which again, I, if someone has an interpretation, I don't, I don't have a problem with it. The the conflict I see is then what does it mean to break one's evolution? Right. Uh, if uh, we have to do it every single time before essence, it's like uh, it, it doesn't make sense to me um, in that aspect of what that means uh, to, uh, to, 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 to break it. Um, that's just my uh, kind of the, the, the first thing that comes to mind when uh, uh, I thought about that as well. I'll just tell you this. Just uh, it's embarrassing, but I mean, I, I was going to lead a Juma prayer and I accidentally, uh, you know, uh, passed some gas. And uh, uh, so I, I broke it. So I had to go in, make wudu. They waited for me and I came back and I did it. So there's an example. Uh, then, you know, the next argument, well, well what about this whole uh, uh, seminal, uh, you know, uh, 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 sperm and stuff like that. And there is such a thing as uh, people have uncontrolled ejaculations, things like this. These things can happen. They're, they're there. So, God, I mean, all that. Not someone's giving a sermon. No, no, no. Honestly, they just, th th these things can happen, you know. Uh, no, I'm saying before, you know, before they get to the point where they've got to, uh, do the prayer you know there's a lot of times say they say uh do will do and for some reason i'm just saying that we can come up with situations where it can happen so th th that's why that argument uh doesn't really isn't so airtight for me saying, are you saying the nullification only applies to that particular uh uh will do oh, i'm sorry yeah, that particular yeah, prayer I, you know, I'll tell you why I even started thinking about this is because Dr. Khalifa was asked in the uh, the questionnaire by Raymond Catton, and somebody said about, you know how uh, the Muslims, they, they keep their socks on all day, and as long as, uh, you know, and they, and they, uh, they don't, they don't wash their feet, they never do the wudu of the feet. And uh, he said, his answer was very specific. He said, all I do is refer to the Quran, five, six. What does it say to do? I, and all I say is, yes, sir. And if you see the commandment, it's a when right. Right. you go to do your prayer. So that's a when. And so yeah, I I, that's how no, I, I see that. We're familiar, yeah. we're familiar with the argument. So I have a question. So are you saying that, like, I just did my wudu right now, and I want to do the noon prayer, or actually I already did it, but let's say um, I wanted to do the noon prayer. So the nullification you're saying is from the sink to the prayer mat, basically. Is that what you're saying? That's the application of it, of what nullifies would do concept. It's only from the sink to the prayer mat. Did I understand you correctly? That's the point. That's where I'm. Uh, that's where I'm currently uh, 
residing. Okay. I mean, I'm living in that space. So as long as you don't pass gas or have any seminal fluid or whatever, from the moment you get to voodoo at the sink and you go to the prayer mat and do your salat, that's just the extent of it. That's it, basically. Uh, that's well, my and, understanding. And this, this is a pretty controversial subject and even suspect it has some pretty, in my view, wild ideas on this, but I really wanted to address, because we've been waiting a few days for Remensis to ask this question. He's having trouble connecting. If he has like general questions about submission because he's really interested, I was hoping we can address some of those, but I'm happy to discuss this also. It's your call. It's up to you. What do you think? I think, uh, I mean, if uh, uh, Bremen says, yeah, if you got more uh, questions, just throw them in there. I just wanted to make a comment regarding the uh, the, the sock concept. This is like another funny uh, tidbit, right? So the, the Quran is very clear that you wash your feet and then somehow the Hadith literature says, oh, well, if you have a, a kufa, a, uh, this leather sock, you can just wipe over it, right? Uh, <laughs> which is just like, what? Like, where, where did this come from? Um, you know, and, and yeah. they, they, out of, they, they twist. Um, so I think that's in the, the, the question. I haven't listened to that in a long time. That's what's in reference to, because they claim and, that in essence, if you have these leather socks, you can just kind of wipe over them. And correct me if I'm wrong, but the traditional understanding is that you can carry over your wudu to multiple prayers. And so my understanding is that if that uh, was incorrect, Rashad would have to make an explicit comment ex explaining that component of it. But he never did. And so I think that co concept just remains intact with the concept of just breaking your wudu, but carrying it over to multiple prayers. Let me understand you, Navid, clearly. Are you saying that uh, one wudu is just okay uh, for every prayer? You cannot. Yeah, as, uh, as the concept is, as long you did your wudu, as long as you didn't break your wudu, uh -huh. then you can carry it over to however many number of prayers that okay. is okay. Okay, no, that's okay. That's okay by me. That's Jeff okay. is proposing the idea that, based on the verse and his understanding, you need to do a new wudu for every salat. You know, no, I'll, I'll add to it. Yeah, no, I'll add I, to I, it. I, 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 oh, okay. I'm sorry, bro. Go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead, bro. Go ahead. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll add to it. See, there's more. There's more information, actually. Uh, Dr. Khalifa explains uh, one of the physical benefits of doing the uh, wudu is is that it the water the running water causes you to need to go to the bathroom to extreme it, it to lose harmful chemicals and stuff and my thing is if if you're just holding it all day so you never have to do with you that just totally nullifies that whole concept right there that if and and you know so if i'm washing my feet and and doing it for every prayer it's going to trigger that uh that bowel, I mean, that uh, bladder release and and possible bowel release as well to, excre to excrete that. So that that's also part of his argument with that. I wholeheartedly agree with that piece in the sense where uh, you see someone will like not drink and uh, hold it all day so they don't have to repeat. I think that's the, the, the wrong approach. Um, I just don't want to go into the other extreme and say that it's like uh, it's necessary because especially in the, the, the winter time here, like the prayers come pretty quick, you know, between one and the other. Um, it's like different than, yeah, you say like in the summer where they're many hours apart. And, and not only that, if you're like out and like, you know, if they're really close to each other and you're like out, it's just not practical to keep, you know, <laughs> getting your wudu every like half hour or whatever. I it do doesn't it. Make sense. I I, I, I'm here to tell you that uh, that's all I've ever done, and I work outside. I deal with it yeah, all I'm the sure time. Yeah, I'm sure it's possible. No, I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm just saying it's not practical. Just because something is uh, impractical doesn't mean it's impossible. It's definitely possible. Um, you know what's interesting? Uh, I wanted to call out suspected because he's saying, and I didn't know this actually. I just found out. He's saying that he ha he used to have your view. And then he heard some arguments, I guess some by me, and then he switched sides on that particular issue. If you're going to expand on that suspect, we'd love to hear what you have to say. 
Yeah, I mean, I think you guys, um, I think guys already covered this, but like uh, maybe what just before I joined. But yeah, if it was obligatory to repeat the wudu every time, then the whole verse after like how to do the wudu is completely useless. Just completely useless if you had to do wudu after every, uh, before every prayer. Like there's no reasons yeah, to show me what nullifies your wudu. No, no, I just, we sink, just. He's saying from the sink to the prayer mat. So those 10 seconds or whatever, if you pass gas, then you have to go back and do your wudu again. It happened to me. <laughs> yeah, no, it's yeah, definitely but, possible. But, but, but yeah, if, yeah if, if, if one passes a gas, I think you... I mean, I wouldn't know how to specifically address that. Just That doesn't sound pragmatic on surface level. Like, it doesn't seem to be what the verse is referring to when it's talking about nullifiers. Hang on, didn't Russia say something about? Russia said something about if you have got some fractalin problem, uh, you don't need to. I think your wudu would be still valid. You don't need to refresh, only if that is a, a medical condition. And I think it's uh, okay. important, Navid, to address what Jeff said and acknowledge the problem he raised. That yes, yeah, some people get this idea that they should start forcing themselves to hold their wudu for like the whole day or whatever just to get through their salah and like uh like yeah when, uh, we have to clarify to jeff that no one is encouraging that at all no right? no if no someone I needs don't to break their wudu no, they no, should no. break their wudu right yeah yeah and just I, do it I again, agree you know? if you need yeah if Important you need to, to use the toilet that. yeah 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 if you need to use the toilet i suggest you use the toilet and not hold your wudu the whole day i totally agree with that i'm just saying that if you don't feel the urge to use the toilet you don't have to, and you could just carry your wudu and do uh, the next one. Um, Jeff, I have a question, though, for you. Just for anecdotal evidence, would it be interesting to ask people at Master Tucson what they did? Just for anecdotal evidence, not necessarily yeah. definitive evidence? Yeah. Yeah. No, no. Wait, uh, oh, no, I never did ask. I know it. they did at uh, San Jose. And I was actually I was shocked when I went there because uh, it was at, uh, between Maghrib and Isha. And then all of a sudden Isha time came and uh, they didn't even do the Adhan for you to go do Wudu. You know, and we were sitting there eating cake and all this other stuff. And, and no, there was even no time to be able to go and do Wudu. It was just like yeah, immediately assuming that everybody's got their wudu. And I come from a Sunni, Sunni background. And for us, there was always an avan. And then people would go do their wudu. There'd be some time. They'd ask everybody, everybody got their wudu. And, and you know, nothing would carry on until everybody had everything taken care of. None of that took place. That's another thing. So that was a red flag to me. Yeah, th this verse, peace be upon you, Seymour. Um, this verse, uh, yeah, I don't know, actually. I mean, I just have to think about it more. But inshallah, I'll try to. But it's interesting, in that same verse, it says, God does not wish to make the religion difficult for you. He wishes to cleanse you. I, To me, this just doesn't make sense that it's limited to the seconds to the prayer mat. That doesn't seem practical to me and doesn't, it just, yeah, but inshallah. I'll, then I'll then what, that, that so, for, you, so you see though, the problem with the whole, the function of the physical but, function but, but, of it. But hold on a second. Wait a minute. Um, the seminal fluid. So you're saying that someone can even get an ejaculation from the, um, yeah, from the, uh, There's, from the sink to yeah. the prayer mat. Well, no, listen, it's not just like that. Some people, they'll do their wudu at home, and then they'll drive to, to, the, to the masjid. You know, they haven't done it yet. They're going to meet up with some people. Oh, I, uh, let me do my wudu before I go. And they're going to meet up with some people. Ah, we'll do our prayer there, that kind of thing. There's all kinds of circumstances. It's never just right from the sink to the, you know, I mean, but not never. I mean, point, it's. But hold on a second. But wait a minute. I'm sorry, but who's going to. Really, you're saying the only way is, well, I don't know, man. I mean, this just gets weird because then you, you could just talk about people that, you know, they yeah. just pass, they just no. lose control of everything. 
in all dimensions. Yeah. But that's like a disease yeah, that, kind of thing. That's not for well, ordinary people, Jeff. No, no. But uh, look at look at look. Just see this, for example. Uh, Would you, agree you have that a, a young healthy person. A healthy person isn't defecating mm. on the way to the prayer mat. No, defecating. What are you talking about defecating? I'm talking about uh, ejaculation or what well, that's the difficult one. Anybody can pass gas on the way. You just bend over. Oops. Comes uh, out. Uh, yep. What? What? Okay. You don't know. Uh, but like the realistically, isn't that like the only thing out of the whole verse that would like even come to mind from sync to pray about? Like, I don't know, David, maybe you could clarify. Me. I, don't, I don't know. This is, seems just, I don't know. Look, it, this is an established what's the, practice. What, what's the verse say? This is what what's this, the verse say? This is what the what's the verse say? Do, and Rashad never corrected them, and that's just it. He, no, he did. He did. Listen, because Raymond Catton, they, they were asking him those kinds of general questions about it. And he just said, well, what's the Quran say? All I can say is, yes, sir. Honestly, that they were asking him about those kinds of things. And it, the expanding of it was open to discuss. And, and he shut it right down. He said, what does the Quran say? All we can do is say, yes, sir. When the, when the call is made or when, when the prayer is announced, however it's said, or when uh, you're called to do salat, you go make wudu. That's what it says. So that's why, I, that's why I'm rigid on that is because I haven't found anything other than that.